Hello and welcome back to another diplomacy commentary. I'm here once again with Ezio. Hello again. Today we're looking at the Weasel Moot 2020 top board. Now, Weasel Moot is usually Chicago's uh, sort of city tournament. Um, people do fly all over the world for it because it's quite a big one. Uh, but in this case, no one went anywhere because of the current COVID situation. <laughs> It was held as a virtual face-to-face -face event, which means it happened in a Discord server. Um, everyone was talking to each other over uh, voice communications only. Um, and yeah, it was an event over the course of a weekend, and it resulted in a top board of the top seven players from that tournament, with them all fighting it out to be the head weasel. But Meme, who made it to the top board, and which country were they playing? I'm glad you asked that question, Ezio. <laughs> so, um, we've got in France, Peter McNamara. Uh, he's an Australian player. I believe everyone else on this list is American, but there might be some Canadians in there. Um, John Anderson is playing Germany. Uh, Hunter Catcher playing England. Zachary Moore playing Turkey. Jake Trotter playing Italy. George Zhang on Russia, and Liam Stokes in Austria. Now, I did actually play in this tournament, as you can hear from my slightly disappointed tone of voice, uh, and the fact that I did not read my own name. <laughs> I did not make it through to the top board. But if you want to check out the games that I played in, uh, go over to the Diplomacy Broadcast Network's YouTube channel, they did live commentary over the whole event, including a pretty great commentary on the top board as well, which I advise you check out after you've watched our one. Yeah, we should maybe do the plug-in at the end of the video for the other people. Huh. I feel like yeah, we're going to but... see this like significant <laughs> drop in viewership right after that comment. Yeah, no, 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 no. stay here. Stay here with us. <laughs> yeah, but we, uh, it's, it's, we'll figure it out. Was that all seven right. players? Did we, did we get through uh, them yes. all? Yes. Oh, okay. That was all seven. Um, the power selection was by means of the Paris method, which means, uh, I won't go into the details, but um, the p players who pick their country first are lower on the tiebreaker. So if someone picked their country last, they will win a tiebreaker against everyone else. Do we, um, do we have that tiebreaker we order? We do. We do. It's in the power rankings right now, which you can't see, um, <laughs> but our viewers can. The viewers can. Don't worry about me. Don't worry. We'll how how about you You try and guess what country was picked last? What country was picked last? Yeah. Um, I think Italy was picked last. Italy was actually picked third. All right. Well, it shows what I know. I thought that... Isn't, isn't, isn't Chris Brand the only one who likes Italy? I thought he no, was the one. Uh, there's plenty of, of top players who like Italy, I think, but Chris Brand is definitely, like, he's one of the best Italy players in the world, so <laughs> he will just pick Italy every time, I think. I suppose. All right, Um. so then, presumably Austria was last, since that's yeah. the meme. Okay. Austria was last pick. Second last pick was actually an interesting one. Germany didn't get picked until second to last, which is very strange in my eyes. I think Germany's a really strong power, especially on a top board. Was France first? France was first, yes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So we're doing this from induction, right? Because we've got Austria's last, Germany's second to last, Italy's third. There's only a few in the middle that I have to work out here. <laughs> yep. So let's see. We've got Turkey, Russia, and England left. Yep. Well... Top players don't like being Turkey, so I'm going to guess that Turkey was fourth. Uh, Turkey was picked fifth. Fifth? Um, All right, I was off were, by one. But you were pretty close to that. Yeah. All right, and so then we've just got Russia and England. Yep. After he picked France, I would expect Russia to be the second pick. Nope. Uh, England was the second pick. So I guess every <laughs> single one wrong. Perfect. <laughs> You were close. I got close every time, and then like as as my odds got better, I just my my accuracy went down. Yep. Yeah, that's that's about right. <laughs> but yeah, um, so this is the tiebreaker order. But actually, I don't think the tiebreaker matters much in this system because on this board, uh, this top board, they decided to make it so that there was no end year, oh. which seems that's very unusual for a top board. Um, 
so I think um, in this one, if my timing was correct, they played two rounds um, before. So one round was a weekend before, and then they played a game on Saturday, and then the top board was on Sunday, giving them a full day for just the one board, I, I think. Yep. Which is potentially why they had extra time for their top board. I gotta say, I like it. I, I'm not so much a fan of the top boards where it ends in 1910, so 1908, everyone starts dot grabbing everyone. Um, and like, people start throwing in 1909 because they know they can't win. I, I expect we'll see less of that in this game, um, which I am I am hoping for. Yeah, that's fair. I, I always think it's a bit um, strange, especially in combination with the other thing on this board, which is um, all placements apart from first in the tournament were preset. So the only placement that matters is the person who comes in first place on this board. Everything else uh, is according to the rest of the tournament results. So I think we're going to see... Um, I think we are actually going to see people throwing potentially at the end of the game for the rest of the tournament placement. The yeah the the rest of the tournament placement is already decided, so the smaller powers don't really have anything to play for if they can't win it. Um, yeah. Well, all right. Well, we'll see. Ah oh, man. It's an interesting one. Um, I can confirm this game doesn't go on for too long. Uh, it is... So you're not going to be watching a ridiculously long video, or at least... Well, I mean, you can see the video's length at Ezio. You're not going to be here for a ridiculously long time. I got to go to bed on time. That's good. <laughs> yep. Hey, I mean, you say that. You're, you're in California. It's like 2, 2 p.m. Oh, absolutely. I'm just making sure this isn't one of those, like, 100-year games, like you were saying we should do a commentary of. <laughs> okay okay hang on that's a good idea <laughs> all right anyways um Wait, how about we how about post, we start looking at 1901 the, post in the comments if you want to see a commentary of the 105 year game that's, all right uh, post in the comments if you want to watch a 24 hour straight stream of captain meme and me just looking at a diplomacy board the entire time because <laughs> that's what it'll be it's it, a 24 hour stream of us commentating it and we might not be done by the end um, yep. yeah yeah Comment if that seems like a fun thing to watch. Um, let us know. <laughs> I don't have a job right now. I don't know about Captain Meme. I feel like he has things to do. But we could find a time, I'm sure, where neither of us need to do anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm still in university. I can do what I want. Right? Anyways, let's let's look at 1901, right. shall we? Yes, we should look at the game board. Uh, right, so. Anything oh my stands God, out France. to you off the bat? Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Can you... Alright, think of a worse way for this 1901 to go. What is so, a... Oof. Uh, I Oof everything, don't man. I think I can think of a worse way. Oh, I, Naples going to Tyrrhenian, maybe. That's like, I guess. It's still going to Tunis and then probably into Western Med in the, in the next year, but... Yep. Alright, so Germany ends up in Burgundy. There was yep. probably saying, oh, let's DMZ Burgundy with the Paris to Picardy, and then Germany just said, nah. England, Liverpool to <laughs> the Wales is just the worst possible. And what's, I think, even, even more potentially punishing is Russia opening north, moving Moscow into St. Petersburg, means England doesn't get Norway. So North Sea has... There's not much incentive to go after anything but France. So I expect to see the North Sea either move into Belgium or support a convoy into Belgium. Um, potentially I could see it bounce Russia out of Norway, but I think that's less likely. Yeah. The, now, yeah, obviously we have a huge commitment from England here with the Wales move. Um, the going into the English Channel down there, this is precisely why you normally would want to open to Norwegian and North Sea, because if Russia opens in this way, now England has no builds guaranteed. Well, they they yeah, do in no, this no case. Builds. I don't I don't think so, because Russia's in Burgundy. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, Germany is in Burgundy. <laughs> and Denmark, incidentally, actually, because, because Denmark could cut North Sea. Um, it, yep. You don't need need Burgundy, but Burgundy is the more likely one. Um, I think it's very likely France ends up with Burgundy from this situation. 
Um, I expect Burgundy to do something, either move into Paris or support Piedmont into Marseille. Um, seem like the most likely moves yep. in my prediction. Um, the East it seems like, yeah, I mean, the East, the East things, Russia open north, um, Austria didn't move to Galicia or bounce in Budapest, or, or move into Budapest, excuse me. Um, so it can't help Russia into Romania, but I don't think that's too important. I mean, it still can, it just would not be able to uh, move, support the move to Greece. And, you know, as Austria, you really want to be supporting that move to Greece just to be 100% sure um, that you get in. <laughs> but yeah, the demilitarized zone in Galicia is an interesting thing here. I actually see this work out most of the time in high level games. Um, I don't think Russia and Austria. Uh, I don't think Russia and Austria tend to be wanting to be the first person to, you know, be hyper aggressive and go and stab immediately in case you know Turkey doesn't take their side. Yeah, the the 1901 stabs in the east tend to be less potent than they are in the west, as we see with this DMZ in Burgundy. Um... Except the Italian stabs on on Austria, they tend to be quite potent. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I just so rarely think of those as stabs, because it's not like Austria and Italy make these agreements, right? It's just, like, <laughs> Italy just says, I'm coming after you, baby, let's go, <laughs> essentially. Well, I, I mean, uh, Italy can sometimes just walk into Trieste while, uh, while, while the Austrian is off bouncing Galicia and such. I agree. Um, but yeah, uh, it, I guess it's I would still call it a stab. <laughs> I uh, sure, uh, sure. It it is a stab. It's it is a potent stab. Turns out having home centers touching can do things, but we don't have that in this game. In fact, we saw Vienna move into Trieste, so now they can just bounce with Venice for a long time if they want to waste units. Yep. The uh, Venice to Vienna move obviously anti-French, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean that's joining in this massive attack yeah. on the front French. Which is clearly coordinated. Do you think it's in, in Italy's interest to help out an England-Germany alliance that might be pushing into France? Um, it depends on how the conquest gets done. In this particular game, I think it would likely be good for Italy to help out EG, because I think Russia is going to have a foothold in Scandinavia, which will be the natural follow-up target. If it's a game where Russia gets crushed out of the north and England is already in St. Petersburg, then France is sort of a buffer between Italy and the alliance um, of EG. But in this case, I'm not, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. And if Germany is offering me Marseille, I would gladly accept it. Yep, that's fair. Um... Particularly, like, if if England, Germany just entirely focus on the north, then Italy is absolutely fine taking things like Marseille and Spain. Especially since those centres can be reinforced quite easily once you get the spare units there. The difficulty is when you don't have the, the spare units at the start of the game. Um, absolutely. So, anything much more to talk about? I guess the, like, the Russian... The downside of this uh, northern opening, usually for the Russian, is not having three units on this uh, southern front. But with the DMZ in Galicia. Yeah, DMZ in Galicia solves that issue, and uh, it seems like the Russian's in a pretty good spot here, although that bounce in uh, Sweden is still very much a possibility. I think, I think it's very likely we see a bounce in Sweden from this, because it looks to me like Russia is going to wind up with Romania. And if there's a chance Russia ends up in Norway, there's no universe where Germany wants to see a three-build Russia. Not no universe. It is highly unlikely Germany wants to see a three-build Russia. And so England is presumably talking with France. And again, I said I expect North Sea to be helping out with Belgium, not or focusing on Norway. So I think, it, I think it's super likely we see Denmark bound Sweden. But... That's not too bad for Russia if they manage to pick up Norway off of they this. They get Norway, anyway. they still get two builds, so... Yep. Yeah, maybe that's the argument, right? Is, look, Russia's going to get the two builds anyways. I don't want to piss off at a six-unit Russia, so I'm just going to let him go up to seven and hope we can rally the board against them. Um, I don't... 
<laughs> That's not the approach I would take, but perhaps it's um perhaps it's the best. That's fair. Um shall we see what happens in the full phase here? Let's do it. Alright. Here we go. <laughs> so uh no contesting of Norway up here and no, no bounce contesting in Sweden. of Norway and no bounce in Sweden. We had a misread. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, I just was completely wrong about everything, like I like I tend to be in these types of situations. Um, very nice defensive orders from France here. Um, successfully yep. protecting Marseille. Absolutely perfect and. You you have to imagine this has been guessed, right? Because neither of those players are going to tell France what they're doing if they're going yes. for Marseille. Yes, it is a relatively... It's, it's an easier guess than some, because there are different nations on either side of it. So if they wanted... If Germany and Italy wanted to give Italy the center, this was the only way they could do it. Um, yep. And so it's not the hardest guess in the world, but... Um, it, it, this went, frankly, horribly for the Italian, um, yep. who foregoed the build in Tunis, expecting Marseille, and instead gets no builds. Yep. Let, let's go to the East in a second. Just want to focus on France a little bit more first. I think the not, cover, not covering Paris or Brest turned out to be it. incredible. That's where the that's yeah. where the the good guess came from, right? Um, yeah, there was the only opportunity. I imagine the convoy to Belgium must have been negotiated then, uh, potentially. Or just predicted, um, because uh, yeah, this might just be a there. I think I think we'll see with the builds. Um, if it was if France is completely okay with England being in the channel. I, I would not be surprised if um, if McNamara just is at war with three people and successfully didn't is building two in the first year. I, I would not be too surprised if that happened. The um, the move to Norway is the part that makes this the um, most unlikely in my mind because France could have convoyed into Brest and moved into Belgium from the North Sea. Would have been a more aggressive move set. Uh, England could have. Yeah. England could have done these things into France. Yeah, that's the one I meant to say. Um, but yep. I don't know. Man, I wish I could see who was talking to whom. Huh. Yeah, I mean that's always the downside of these kind of commentaries, right? You don't get the bonus negotiations on the side. Yeah, you don't even get to uh, see who's in a room with whom. It's frustrating yeah but uh yeah <laughs> that's Either perfect way, play from france yeah Absolutely from, from the worst possible opening to plus two i think it's it's fantastic absolutely amazing um and now in the east um we <laughs> yeah. have uh moves that were made by all of the countries so the the Turk supported Russia into Romania, and it looks like Austria tried to get support into Romania yep. from the Russian. It's, it's difficult to, like, think who, like, why would the Russian do that? <laughs> why would the Russian support um, Austria into Romania? Why would Good the, question. Yeah, why would Austria believe that would ever work? Um maybe they had some kind of assurance from I don't know, they, they wouldn't have expected Turkey to support that move, right? Because it puts them with three units around Turkey which is Maybe they were just saying, let's Turkey. bounce Russia out of, um, let's bounce Russia out of Romania. They weren't expecting to actually take it but they didn't That's want fair. to see Russia make all the builds And that would make sense with the, uh, potential Russian taking of Norway in the north um they might have been going, okay, you know, we need to unite, there's this big scary threat is about to happen right here. Yeah, it's <laughs> Let's keep weird. Him out of the Balkans. It's weird that would happen while Italy is going for this hyper anti-Turkish moveset, 
with Ionian directly into Aegean rather than taking Tunis. Um, this gets you into a GNC a uh, turn faster than the Lepanto would, and much faster than in any other world, presumably to facilitate a powerful attack against Turkey, which you still want Russia's assistance with. Um, so, I feel like there were miscommunications here um, between between Italy and Austria about what was going on, precisely. Possibly. I would usually see this, because I, I really love this Italian opening. I know it's worked out absolutely terribly for them here. Uh, usually the plan is that you take Trieste to make up for the build on Tunis, and I guess here the Italian thought, okay, I have a shot at Trieste, I have a shot at Marseille, I'm going to get a build somehow, so it's worth going for. Um, but usually when I see this move, it's because Austria or Italy think they're facing a juggernaut, um, and they want to be in this hyper-aggressive position, because you don't really need this move to the Aegean if Russia is on your side, right? You can take Turkey apart pretty quickly regardless. Um, so, the main thing this does is give the Austria-Italy alliance an advantage against a Russia-Turkey alliance. Yeah, and in this case it's not the best coordinated Russia-Turkey alliance, because they have bounced out of the Black Sea. Um, and assuming Italy and Austria work together in the spring, um, there is a guaranteed capture of Bulgaria, um, which yep. would not be the case if there was a fleet in the Black Sea. Yep. Um, so that is... This is the advantage of the aggressive Italian move, and it's it could have been mitigated by um, more trust on the other sides, but that's not that doesn't always happen. Um, it's weird when Turkey supports Russia into Romania. I would expect them to have an agreement about the Black Sea. Um, I would expect Turkey to say, "Look, I'll support you into Romania. You let me into the Black Sea. We call it a day." Um, but instead, that didn't happen. See, in, in a lot of top boards uh, and such like, I see this bounce in Black Sea happening over and over and over again for a lot of the game, even if there is a Juggernaut in place. It happened in my Nexus final, for example, although that was quite a lot my fault because I was Turkey in that game, but uh, the just letting the other player into Black Sea gives them so much potential power over you that you really don't want that, even if it would advantage you. Um, but against an AI this fast, you really need it. <laughs> yeah. So this has definitely taken them by surprise, and the Turk is seriously on the back foot here. Uh, but Russia still gets two builds. Yeah, it's not going to benefit the Italian very much, because the Italian... The, the guaranteed take of Bulgaria that you talked about is for the Austrian unit. The Italian has to, ca uh, has to tap... Constantinople. So the Italian's not going to get anything out of it even now. We could look at builds before we talk about the, the capture itself um, so we can show everyone yep. the tactics on board because it, the builds affect this dramatically. Um, yeah. So I think we should talk about that next phase. Uh, okay, let's move on and see all those beautiful Italian oh wait. <laughs> nice, um, nice units from Italy. Oh, and nice, you, you separated it so we can look at the builds and not see the next moves. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, this is the conspiracy interface, by the way. You may have noticed we're using a different map. Um, it's an app that I think has one of the best interfaces out there for just showing moves clearly, so that's why we're using it. Um, the game was actually played on Backstabber. So, I think the most revealing builds are going to be the Fleet Breast, Fleet Liverpool. Um, yep. Because those indicate to me that, in fact, France and England are not happy-go-lucky. Um, they are. They were, in fact, at war, and we can just say France is a god. Um, yep. McNamara just pff, had three people attacking him in 1901, and he said... I dare you to take my centers, and, and um, yeah, that's amazing. Very well played by him. Um, the other interesting one, Austria chose not to waive their builds, to the surprise of everyone, and 
the army in St. Petersburg, I think, is um, an important build as well. Yep, it's definitely the more flexible option than a fleet on either coast. You would quite often in games, I think, see a fleet on the north coast of uh, uh, of St. Petersburg here, just to try and push for Norway, given that you've already got the units in position to attack it. Um, but St. Petersburg doesn't get, uh, Army St. Petersburg doesn't get trapped there if you do end up against uh, an England-Germany alliance. It can potentially be used somewhere else. Uh. Yeah, in this particular situation, um, St. Petersburg couldn't get trapped there um, because Finland can could support St. Petersburg into Norway, and that's a guaranteed attack. Um, the, that is a guaranteed attack, actually. You're but right. But in um, this case, you could support Finland into Norway, and then you could use Saint Petersburg somewhere in the south if you if so inclined. Um, and I think because they built army, I, I'm not entirely sure here. Um, it's certainly less anti England, and so I would expect Russia to be saying, "Look, I'm going to take Norway and then move on with my life." Um, it's just that leaves Sweden exposed to an attack on Sweden from Norway with German support. Um, yep. So I feel like Russia is, doesn't have a guaranteed path forward um, with these builds, which is, I think, quite valuable in this particular situation uh, because Russia doesn't necessarily have any useful friends at the moment. Turkey is in bad shape. And I mean, Germany built a couple armies, but I don't think they're going after England, and so the only other help would be Austria. Yeah, should be noted that, uh, I mean, Galicia is still demilitarized for the moment, right? <laughs> it is possible that the Russian gets on side with this austria Italy attack against Turkey and just tries to sort of... Um, cut their losses there uh, and say you know absolutely yeah you tried to bounce me out of romania but i got in anyways let's let's be friends yeah precisely i think that's the angle i would be going for as russia here i don't th well no actually sticking with the turk isn't terrible as russia because you're probably going to be able to hold your senses uh it's difficult to make progress yeah you're definitely looking to gain more if you just turn on the turk uh yeah, in the short term for certain, and because of that army St. Petersburg, um, Russia is significantly less vulnerable to an Austrian attack, as opposed to a fleet in St. Petersburg. And so you can actually, it's, it is um, easier to work with Austria and still defend yourself after the fact, um, as opposed to being super heavily committed to the north. Yep. All right. Um, so now I think it's a good time to be talking about um, how do like Austria and Italy capturing Bulgaria. Uh, right. You want to explain the, the the guaranteed tactics behind that one? Obviously, on Bulgaria here, you've got two potential support holds: Constantinople and Romania. Um, you've got four Austrian Italian units, so you can. Do Aegean cuts Constantinople, Budapest cuts Romania, and then you need to go in with Serbia because Romania can potentially attack Serbia here uh, to cut support if you try and go in with Greece. So it, it's guaranteed to give the center to the Austrian units in Serbia. Hey, Captain Meme, could you support the attack into Bulgaria from Serbia with a GNC? Why do you have to attack Constantinople? Yes, that, so that's because of this new, brand new fleet build in Smyrna, uh, where Smyrna could potentially tap Aegean, and then you, you know, you lose your support in that respect, and the support that Constantinople is giving Bulgaria still goes through. So you do not manage to take the center. Um, as Ezio was saying before, if the Turkish or the Russian uh, had a fleet in the Black Sea, they would have an extra support here, they would be able to hold Bulgaria guaranteed? Is it guaranteed? I think it's guaranteed. Um, uh, yeah, Bulgaria is guaranteed, and the, there's not even a guess for Romania instead, because if, if they moved Ankara into the Black Sea, because then Sevastopol could support Romania, while Black Sea supports Bulgaria. Um, yeah. And it would take 
an Austrian unit to be in Galicia to add guesses to that front, which could be potentially offset by a unit in Ukraine. And But then if we're in Galicia, there's then the guess for Warsaw, so you need the unit in Moscow to cover Warsaw to make it yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as is, if, assuming the board looked like this, with the unit in the Black Sea, the east holds. Without it, Bulgaria falls. Um, the yeah. good news for Turkey is they don't make any progress past Bulgaria into the Turkish homeland. Unless they get Russia on side. Yeah. Even with Russia, um, it's difficult um, because Russia is not in the Black Sea. Um, Russia would need to... F uh, e even if Russia gets into Armenia with a fleet to cut Ankara, um, the West, that is Austria and Italy, would need... Um, with only a GNC in Bulgaria, you still can't break Constantinople because Smyrna can support hold Constantinople, and you can only attack it from two, they would need to get their fleet into Eastern Med and still get the Austrian fleet into a GNC. Only then could they actually take Constantinople. Um, yep. And, again, due to the way that the tactics would work out, it would it, the Austrian would be the one that would have to take Constantinople to do it the uh, as quickly as possible, which is, I don't think... An agreement Italy will agree to, given that Austria is already at five, Italy's at three, and Austria would stand to gain two centers before Italy sees one, which would be a heavily imbalanced relationship. So I think even though Turkey is losing Bulgaria, I think it's this is why Turkey's a strong country, um, because it takes so long for you to die, you have to hope the alliances crumble before you are gone. Yep, yeah. and no, no end game year means you always have that chance to come back, uh, no matter how late it is. Um, one thing I could see the Italy-Austria alliance doing to sort of offset this thing of the Italians not getting getting any builds, uh, would be to just donate Trieste to the Italian. It's usually what happens in this hyper advanced Aegean strat, um. <laughs> But usually it happens in 1901, so they've missed that opportunity. They would have to do it later. Uh... It looked like they were kind of saying, maybe you get Trieste, maybe you don't. If Austria ended up in Romania, Italy would have ended up in Trieste. Um, yep. So. And Italy had that shot at Marseille to get the build uh, regardless. So I think, the, I think donating Trieste is definitely on the table. Hmm. All right. Um, I want to look at some moves. Yep. Let's go through to the spring of nineteen oh two. Oh boy. <laughs> well, that Italy Austria alliance didn't last very long. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't work with Italy if um, you can just kill them like this. Italy got into Constantinople. This yeah. is. <laughs> Italy's in Con. Khan is in Bull. Bull is in Rum. R rum moved to Galicia? Sev supported the move into Rum. Is there a good reason for the, the uh, Russian to be wanting to give up Romania here? This seems um, like a bad this decision. This was the to way me. to... So, um, this was a really nice tactical shot from the Russian and the Turk. So, um... It was entirely plausible that Austria went after Galicia with strength 2, or after Romania with strength 2, um, or they did their attack on Bulgaria with the cutting and a support into Bulgaria. So this move, these, these moves from Russia and Turkey would have stopped the move into Galicia with a bounce, and even with that move into Galicia, um, Romania was still protected with strength 2. Um, because Russia was supporting Turkey in. Um, this, unfortunately, when everything works, um, <laughs> Italy ends up in Constantinople with two adjacent vacant home centers. So, okay, Turkey's not losing, or I Italy is not losing that. Turkey is losing something. But Turkey is currently in Romania, 
and Italy is set to lose two home centers. Um, what did Piedmont order? Uh, it ordered a support for Spain to Marseille. Um, did Spain move to Marseille? Yep, that's what that movement arrow there is. Cool, there is uh, a little bit of covering. Yeah, so obviously no, uh, no map shows Fleet things perfectly. Fleet Brest moved to Gascony. It is not nope. often that I see a fleet end up in Gascony. Um, I, yeah, I, I it's okay. It's more defensive, right? It, I assume they were guessing that Burgundy would go to Gascony, which um, is something I'd yeah. be tempted to do as the German in that scenario. Also, because, um, because they were attacking Burgundy with strength two, if Burgundy ends up retreating, um... Uh, they didn't want Gascony as an available retreat option, especially yep. with Spain being vacated. So this forces the German... This would have forced the German army in Burgundy back. Um, unfortunately for the French player, um, the Picardy support was cut. And so this still actually gives Picardy a retreat into Brest. All right, this was, yep. this, this was a really good move with Brest. This, uh, I mean, I don't know that the fleet in Gascony is that useful, but actually there's, I mean, it can support Mid-Atlantic Ocean, which is what it needs to be doing, right? Absolutely. Um, and there's zero threat from the south now that Italy's on side, uh, especially now that Italy's being attacked by Austria and can't really, uh, <laughs> can't really afford to um, attack France in any Case. Did Picardy need to retreat into Brest, or is did you handle retreats in a as a separate? Uh, um... Retreats are a separate phase on on conspiracies. Sure. So Picardy currently has to retreat, and we don't know yep. where it's gone yet. Cool. I thought the I think these were fantastic moves from France. Once again, that's that's awesome. That's yeah. really really clean. Obviously, the downside is that clearly the negotiations aren't going very well. If you need to make these kind of uh, well, defensive, they uh, managed to get Italy back on side. That's true. Um, which and that's is a big thing. huge. Um, it's still looking like Brest is falling, um, but potentially not. Right? There's still just tons of guesses. There's just guesses on guesses because Gascony could support Brest instead. Um, yeah. No. This is just this is the dream from France when you're getting attacked from two nations to just. Just hold on. Uh, actually, you can defend uh, Brest and Paris guaranteed here, right? You can defend those, but that risks Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Yes, it does. That's true. And Mid-Atlantic Ocean, if you lose as France when you're on the defensive like this, basically you're... In my opinion, your ship is sunk. You are in serious trouble, yeah. With that. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> Should we say more about France here, or should we move on to other areas? I'd like to look at Scandinavia, um, where I see a whole bunch of red lines. See, I'm very confused about what... Well, no, I'm not confused about what's going on here, so... I think I see what happened, I just don't understand it. Yeah, the Russian wants to go anti-German, right? And presumably taps Norway just to make sure that the English player doesn't screw with them. I'm assuming that the Russian is pro-English here, um, and this is just a move to take care of, of things, because otherwise you would go for Norway, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason not to go to Norway unless you're uh, trying to keep the English player on site. Meanwhile, the German tries to get into Baltic just to stop the Russian unit being able to do any shenanigans there and move Kiel up to Denmark to put two on Sweden. While moving into Silesia to potentially pester Warsaw, potentially thinking Austria was ending up in Galicia. Cilicia is an interesting move. Um, it's not one I do often as Germany, and I, I feel like it's actually pretty effective if you're tied down on the, on the French front like this and you can't get armies through. You might as well send them somewhere else. Yeah, I, I usually accompany it with a move to Prussia. I like to do both, um, build Army Berlin and Army Munich. And then go after both, but that's a little more predictable. Um, if you see Army Berlin, Army Munich in this case, you're like, hmm. So I think uh, Berlin Munich into Prussia Cilicia is a concerted effort to get SCs. I think Munich to Cilicia is an effort to 
dictate what's going on on the other side of the board without necessarily getting SCs. So if uh, Austria had gotten into Galicia here, Germany gets a huge say in what happens on that side of the board, what happens as a result. Um, and that kind of influence is absolutely what you want in a top board game where you, you know, you don't really get time to negotiate with the players on the other side of the board uh, all that often, and they won't give you their time because you're not important to them right now. If you're in Cilicia, they're giving you their time, <laughs> and you're going to have some say. Of course. Yeah, this is um, this was a really interesting turn. I, I, I see. This is there were some fantastic moves here. Yeah. I feel like Russia and France have played... Russia and the South, that support into Galicia while supporting Turkey and Armenia, I love. I don't know how I feel about not taking Norway. Um, I see thoughts, I take thoughts. It's, I'm, I'm addicted. <laughs> but, like, maybe maybe this is going to work out really well. But we'll see if, Fr if England is on Russia's side. Yeah, it's possible, although we are seeing England commit pretty heavily against France down here, which makes you think England can't stab Germany as well. That wouldn't make sense. Um, yeah. Um, bec there are times where it's relatively easy to switch from working with Germany against France to with France against Germany. Um, in the West, England, when they are in the English Channel and the North Sea like this, frequently can change their allegiances. Um, I don't think that's particularly likely, given Germany has only one fleet, whereas France has two. But it's... I would not be too shocked to see France realize... I can't see England realize France is too tough a nut for me to crack right now. My best chance at growth is to stab Germany for Denmark and Holland. Yeah. Uh, but England can't really stab for Denmark and Holland here, right? Because his army's just moved to Picardy. Absolutely. So Belgium's relatively undefended even. You can move it back to Belgium, but that just tips off the German that, hey, England's now coming for you. you yes, know. the move to Belgium would likely be coincided with a move into Helgoland Bight from yep. the North Sea. Yep, and English Channel up to the North Sea, right? Back with... to North, Irish Sea into English, and suddenly... England has three units on Holland, two units on Denmark, um, and France will likely not attack England immediately, but then there could be as, oh, well, what's France going to do from there? And you have to guess, is France going to now work with Germany against you, or whatever, right? It's, um, there, there is definitely danger to the move, but it is a potential two-turn stab that is generally there with the English-Germany alliance. Um, England usually has options. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of just looking at the south here and how beautiful this whole move set with the Italian getting into Constantinople is, right? Because as you pointed out, this is obviously um, hugely disadvantageous to the Russian if, it, uh, if these moves actually go through, but the only situation where these moves go through is if the Austrian does something like this and completely ignores attacking because any other possibility and this doesn't happen. Um, um, yeah, basically, because if if Italy and Austria go after Bulgaria, um, it's it's possible, right? If 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 they did the guaranteed capture of Bulgaria, like we were describing, a Giantacon, Greece support Serdable, Bud to Rum. Um, Vienna to Galicia, Trieste to Serbia. Um, in those move cases, Turkey would still end up in Romania. Um, in this case, Italy would not end up in Constantinople, but from Russia's perspective, Turkey would still take Romania from him. Yes, that would be a problem, but it's but still... potentially valuable, right? Because then you've got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, instead of disbanding, it's in Romania. Yep, that, that's the thinking there. You've got three armies on this front then, although, like, Warsaw isn't the most useful, but it can at least hold down Galicia. Um, yep. but, but from yeah, this, the... this is just... <laughs> <laughs> what what this makes me wonder is, like, was this a last-minute decision from the Austrian that he didn't tell anyone? Because I doubt Russia would have 
wanted this move set if he knew the Austrian was going to stab the Italian. I think that's the point. I think he's. I think he's happy to have these other people make slightly inefficient moves. It's awkward for Austria because now there's a Russian army in Galicia and a Turkish <laughs> army in Romania, while Vienna and Budapest are vacant. Uh, so yep. this is. This is definitely going to be a little scary for the Austrian, um, and I have I am super curious to see how they work out the Eastern relationships in the fall. See, I could have almost seen this being a really effective um, like AT starter, except that obviously it makes the Italian get into Constantinople. You would expect. If Austria had told the Turk he was going to do this, the Turk wouldn't have done this either, because they would have wanted to protect Constantinople. Um, as is now, I don't think they can knock Constantinople out, right? Um, they can knock... Turkey can knock Constantinople out, but Constantinople would then retreat to either Smyrna or Ankara, so it wouldn't be the most effective, but still useful. Yeah, it, it says the Italian unit on the run, but it's pulling back your units, and then you have to corner it and like get it out of your HSCs. You're losing something. Um. Yeah, there's um, there's gonna be a tempo lost to handle that fleet um, because it's a fleet in Turkey. It's remarkably, it, it's not the worst. It's gonna be, it's gonna take like a year. I think. You let it take Constantinople this turn because you can't do anything about it, but next spring you attack Constantinople with support from either Black Sea or Aegean, and then it either retreats to Ankara or Smyrna, and then you can kick it out of whichever one it goes to, and then it cannot retreat to the third because it's a fleet. Um, but you have to uh, pull the army back to do that, right? Yes. Because if you put uh, Black Sea or Aegean in Constantinople, then it just retreats to the adjacent province to whichever one of those you moved out, and then you don't have the units to knock it out again. Absolutely. It's awkward, but... Yeah, I, I think that actually leads to a situation where the Austria-Turkey alliance is quite good for Turkey, despite Austria getting so much out of it. Right, because you're safe to pull that unit back and disband the uh, the Italian fleet, um, and you can set up to make progress on the Russian front pretty quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. I wanna I wanna um, see some moves. I wanna see more moves. Yeah, we spent a while on this phase. Here. I really love this, uh, but we're gonna say goodbye to it and move on to the fall. Uh, no, not the fall the phase. Retreats. The retreats. Um, hey, look, Picardy didn't go off the board. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Wow. Okay, let's uh, move ahead to the full phase. Okay, no Austria Turkey. Um, you're right that they didn't knock Constantinople out uh, this turn. Yeah. They just let that happen. Um, but yeah, bad phase for Austria. They lose Serbia here. That uh, seems accurate. And they get an Italian unit walking into Tyrolia. Um, it looks like they decided it wasn't worth going for this now. Yeah, they were un upset by the Russian army in Galicia. I presume Russia broke the DMZ. Um, and Austria felt that indicated a long-term stab. Um, and... Yikes! <laughs> Uh, yep. The the Russian retakes Romania from the Turk after helping the Turk in, but loses Warsaw in the process. Uh, no, they didn't lose Warsaw. That's into Galicia. That's that's Cilicia moving to Galicia. I thought there was a move from Cilicia into Warsaw and then Warsaw into Galicia. No, okay, that's interesting. Very cool. So the German being in Galicia. Well, I mean, I said they wanted to be part of southern negotiations. I think they're getting that. Here they, here they are. What on earth does that unit do? Um, Whatever he wants it to, man. Who does he want to? Who does he want to win? Right? That's that's really yep. that's huge. I'm just surprised Austria picks up nothing. Like they get they get Tunis, uh, so they're break even, but they lose their position, they lose their alliance, and they have three angry people on the border. Um, I've I've never been there as Austria. <laughs> uh, that's that's not a thing. And two of them actually have builds, right? No, Turkey doesn't get a build. Only Italy gets the build. 
Mm. Because Turkey's minus Khan plus Serbia. Yes, they so. didn't pick up Romania. Uh, so. Uh, and, and in the in... north, <laughs> in the north, we see Sweden taking Norway, Denmark yep. taking Sweden. So net Germany builds. Yep. And, and in the west, England goes down one. Right. Uh, they lose Norway. They don't pick anything up. Um, in the French census here, it will look a bit confusing to start with, but the English player apparently supported Ruhr to Burgundy, but Germany didn't make that move. Germany self-bounced Munich instead. Um, not that it would have mattered, because... No, it, it would have mattered, it would have bounced Marseille out of Burgundy. Um, but Burgundy successfully gets into Gascony, because Gascony goes to Brest, and Brest goes to Picardy. <laughs> And successfully dislodges it um, while England gets into the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Oh boy, a lot of movement. I was not expecting that much movement in France this turn. Yeah, I really I really do like these French moves. Um, it's a very aggressive defense. Um, so Paris was secured with these moves, Burgundy and Picardy were both tapped, so there was no way for France to lose Paris. Um, and I believe Mid-Atlantic Ocean tapped English Channel as well, correct? Yep. Meaning the only way for Brest to be lost would have been for Picardy to support English Channel into Brest. Um, which didn't yep. happen. And uh, that, that actually wouldn't have worked because um, Brest would have dislodged Picardy, which would have cut the support. Uh, so the only way... Uh, so Gascony would have bounced it. Uh, Burgundy would have needed to tap Paris. Yeah, which... Exactly. So, I mean, might yeah. have happened. But, uh... Which might have happened, but it's it's unlikely Burgundy taps Paris unless it's being done in coordination with some other moveset. Um, but yep. the upside from these moves from France is they have kicked... England out of Picardy. So Brest is feeling significantly safer, especially because English Channel got vacated. Because Irish Sea was the one supporting into Engl into Mid-Atlantic. It wasn't English Channel supporting Irish Sea. Um, potentially because England was more defensive-minded, was worried about a retreat to North Atlantic Ocean, perhaps? That would make sense. I was going to say it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Um... Because you you always want Irish Sea to be moving in in this case, right? But yes, uh, defending Liverpool is important. England knows they're not getting any builds here, I think. Um, so the retreat into North Atlantic would have been really difficult to deal with if they hadn't got that Irish Sea uh, fleet hit there. Um, but yeah, uh, a bad turn for England. And that's potentially good for France, because France can go to England and say, Look... <laughs> not getting anything else of this your army just got knocked out of Picardy it's back in Belgium again uh, presumably um, and Germany is now in Gascony Germany's gonna run through my senses while you don't get anything plus they're in Galicia <laughs> they're already like controlling this board you're the lesser partner in this alliance uh, and you helped Germany into Sweden he is building while you are disbanding um, yep. I think I think that's an important pitch. If Germany wants to retain this alliance, they're going to have to find a way to balance the alliance for England, I think. Um otherwise there's not there's not a huge amount of reason for England to stick with it. Except for the fact that Germany has only one fleet. That's quite an important thing to point out. Yeah, I'm interested to see what France does. I think it's incredibly unlikely France chooses to disband the fleet in mid-Atlantic Ocean instead of retreating. Um, but if France makes that move, I think it would um, be heavily indicating a desire to work with England. Um, it's It feels terrifying because if you make this disband, England can take Portugal, guaranteed. And Germany can take Spain, right? Well, not necessarily, because you get to rebuild, and so Ger and so France could rebuild Army Marseille. Oh, Marseille, that makes sense. Um, um, so it's not the most exposed. It is still 
I, I don't think it's a good retreat. Um, I, I don't, I would not make that disband, but I think it's, it's something that's worth considering. Um, and then deciding, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, what are you talking about? <laughs> but it, it's an interesting way to work your way out of the, uh, diplomatic side of this, you know, as opposed to just having to try and tactically defend yourself for the rest of the game. You need to try and get England to turn on Germany. Yeah. And I, I think you can just convince England to turn on Germany. I think that's not the most impossible uh, conversation to have um, for all the reasons we discussed earlier. So I think your, your, your odds are much better to make the convincing diplomatic effort rather than saying, hey, look at how exposed they've made myself to you. You shouldn't take advantage. <laughs> yep. Maybe not the best pitch. <laughs> uh, right. Is there anything else important on this board? The... Russian doesn't get a build because the German took Sweden. Does anyone get a build apart from uh, apart from Germany? Italy builds. What? Oh, Italy took Constantinople. Yes. Um. So Italy builds. Russia. Wait, no, not Russia. Germany builds. Um. England disbands. And that's it. Because Tunis was captured. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, shall we move on to the next phase? Yeah, let's look at the retreats. Do we see, um, does... no, France is not a lunatic. <laughs> France retreating to Portugal, um, that's... Very natural. Yeah, the safe move here. Uh, there's, there was obviously also the possibility of aggressively retreating into the North Atlantic, but that seems like a bad move. It kind of just forces England to stick with Germany for the time being. Right? Yeah, and because of the fleet in the Irish Sea, you're not even getting anything. Yeah, we, we discussed if you attack from Irish Sea into Mid-Atlantic, the retreat into North Atlantic is much more uh, tempting. But I, I, I think this retreat to Portugal makes so much more sense. I think from France's perspective, this is not about this is not about going down in flames. This is about stalling for as long as possible until England inevitably stabs. I think, I think that needs to be France's mindset: is just stay, stay alive. Um, and I think that is his mindset, and I think he's doing a fantastic job. Yeah. This is this is really really clean. Okay. Um. So the retreat to Norwegian seems like the obvious one. I guess you could have gone to Skagerrak, but that's more anti-German, and I don't think England wants yeah, to look anti-German. Um... With Germany taking Sweden, there's not much value in being in Skagerrak over North Sea, I believe. Or over yeah. Norwegian, excuse me. Yeah, unless you're going to stab Germany here, and if you're going to stab Germany, then you want to do that uh, in one swift move, not in a retreat that Germany can when then Germany say. When Germany gets to build a fleet in yeah. Berlin and be like, hey, you're still gonna... You're, you sure you want that fleet in the Skagerrak? Uh -huh. Yeah, I want to see builds, and then I think we should do some nice power rankings talk. Yep, that would be a good idea. Let's go ahead and move to builds. Uh, Army Munich, Army Rome, Army Rome. Okay, um, I guess Beautiful. that's. I want to take some Austrian, Austrian dots. But it's... Give me those dots. <laughs> <laughs> how how likely are you to get that army out? That seems like a mistake to me. Oh, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee from here. There's it, it's it's gonna happen. We'll we'll look we'll look at that and when we when we discuss power rankings. Okay. Um, so Army Munich, that seems sensible, sticking with the, uh, England-Germany alliance here. Yeah, there's the French army in Burgundy, right? Norwegian coming off the board is interesting. I would not have been surprised to see Irish Sea, I think, come off Irish the board. Irish Sea is basically a fleet in English Channel, so I think it's, um, I, I like keeping Irish. Yeah, there's no real good option here, is there? Feels bad, doesn't it? Man, I wish I had more dots. It's a lot easier. <laughs> I mean, as England, you have to consider just making a deal with the Russian here, right? Because even if you do somehow manage to get Norway back, which it looks unlikely, even Finland and St. Petersburg are there to support it, it then retreats into the Norwegian and it goes and takes Edinburgh, and then you're screwed. Oh, from here, yeah. From here, absolutely. I think England is going to say, you know what, Russia? Congratulations. Norway is yours. Hey, good luck with Sweden, buddy. I've, my North Sea's got bigger fish to fry. Yep. But then the interesting question is, is that combined with a stab on the German? Or is it just a, 
you know, leave me alone, I'll leave you alone, and Germany can just sort of meander around here without any support from anyone, and just stay on his census. Something like that. Um, I would expect something like that to be the agreement they come to. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you want to talk uh, power rankings? Shall we go power rankings? Yes. Um, sure. I have a pretty solid number one here, I think. Okay, who is your solid number one? Germany. Sure. I think it depends a lot on whether England turns around this phase, uh, but I really like the German having that army in Galicia. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. I think... I, I agree with you. I think Germany is objectively looking to be in the best place, um, the best position on this board. My feeling is... I think it is enough better, and he has hands in enough cookie jars that people are not happy about it. Um, mm. So I think... Um, I expect him to do well for the next year, um, but I don't expect this position to be maintained. I think, it's, I think it is simply too good, and he is still a central power with... I, I see no potential to become a corner power. Um, I yep. think he is too exposed and too powerful at the moment um, for this position to to be fantastic. Personally, I think that Russia and Turkey are actually in a better position than Germany because their their paths forward are very clear and it's hard to stop them. This juggernaut is going to do juggernaut things, I think. That's very fair. I was looking at that, as you said, uh, no potential to become a corner power, and yeah, that's absolutely right, right? He may have this unit in Gascony, but it's not going to help crack the uh, the Frenchman that fast. Um, especially if England isn't... <laughs> especially if England turns on him, but let's say that England doesn't turn on him here. Um... Russia's position is really strong, can't really be assaulted by anyone right now, even the German. Uh, yeah, and, like, there's no way he can make any progress against the Englishman, because he's got one fleet. So... Absolutely. Maybe I was too quick to jump to uh, that number one power ranking. That that said, I, I don't get me wrong, I love the German's position... I, I love this fleet in Galicia. I, I love the army in Gascony. I love this alliance with England he's got. I think everything is looking so good for him. I... This is why I hate being Germany, to be honest, because I feel like he's done a fantastic job, except he didn't try to kill Russia, which is a common way for Germany's to become a, a sort of corner power. They take the Russian spot. Um, and they can't kill England or France here, and so I think it's just... I think this is tough for Germany, whereas I think Russia is just going to have a very straightforward game, right? Work with work with Turkey and Italy to crush the Austrian, make whatever growth I can, um, and then as soon as Austria is done, turn our eyes on to Germany and f figure out who's going to attack Germany with us. Um, I think I think that's just a big danger for the German. Yeah. So I personally would put Russia in first, and then Germany in second. I think I can agree with that. I was going to say I didn't really agree with your assessment that you put the Turk uh, higher than Germany, but now you've said that Germany's in second, I think I can... <laughs> um... Yeah, I think Turkey um, is just going to be... It's going to be so slow for Turkey to deal with the Turk, or to deal with the Italian <laughs> in Constantinople. Um, yep. I think if if that's a Turkish fleet in Constantinople, I would put Turkey ahead of Germany. But this is basically going to stall Turkey for a full year. But from the long-term thinking, it, it this doesn't weaken Turkey's position that much. Um, it definitely is frustrating, but I think that Turkey and Italy are going to work something out with this fleet in Constantinople. Perhaps Turkey supports um, themselves into Greece from Aegean letting the Italian out, and they say, look, I've done Sevcon shuffles before, we can do a Naples con shuffle type deal. Um, and that that Italian fleet doesn't actually hurt Turkey so much, 
Um, but it still is frustrating to have an Italian fleet in a Turkish home center. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say Turkey third, definitely. Right. So we've got uh, um, George Zhang in Russia at the top at the moment, uh, comfortably behind the Austrian flag. Hang on, I need to sort this out. Um, then Germany. That's uh, Anderson, John Anderson, in second, um, according to our rankings. Turkey um, is Zach Moore in third. Now, who is in fourth? And this is an interesting one, uh, because there's a lot of powers here who... Aren't looking so hot. <laughs> who aren't looking great, yeah. Um, I might actually say France, despite the fact yeah. he's got a German army in Gascony. That's McNamara pulling <laughs> out that defense and just still staying in a super strong position. He's still on five centers. Um, I am not sure, to be honest. I'm, um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, like, so, I, I, I'm not sure who, where I would put everyone else from this position. Um, I think England has a difficult time after losing the unit last turn. So there's the Russian fleet in Norway without... Uh, the English fleet being a buffer. Um, I think France is in a tough position with potentially two enemies still who are very determined um, in a potentially critical position. I think um, fleet in mid-Atlantic Ocean, Army Gascony, is ar plus armies and all the rest of them, is really, really dangerous for France. Um, and against a lesser player, France would already be dead. But even even McNamara, I expect, will have a hard time holding from here. Um, and if that attack goes off without a hitch, then England is much better than France in the power rankings. But how does that fight go? I'm not sure. And then in the east, you've got Austria, who has enemy units everywhere around him. And I'm assuming those Italian units are enemies because of the army roam. That yep. to me that just screams I want I want some sweet Austrian bots. But that German army in Galicia might be a an Austrian ally, which drastically changes the position of of uh, the the flavor of the position. <laughs> yeah. This was my thinking with the German unit, right? It's fantastic in that it can affect things on this side of the board. And if Austria is getting crunched like that, it's gonna take a lot longer to crunch Austria if They've got this one extra unit supporting them. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, stopping that crunch from happening could potentially buy Germany the time they need to, to solidify this position up here and, and start moving. Uh, Absolutely. Delay the Russian gains so Russia can't quite hit Germany so fast. Yep. Um, I absolutely agree. So let, let, let's have a look. Who do we think is the weakest power here? Italy. I I would say Italy as well. I really don't like that army Rome build. I know it's uh, clearly like anti-Austrian, but I don't think it gets out. Yeah, it, it, it not getting out is is risky. But I think the bigger issue is even if it gets out, there's an Austrian fleet in Tyrrhenian Sea. Yep, that's true. So, uh, yeah. How do you? How are you going to handle that? Um, I would much rather have a fleet that I build in Naples that I can move to Tyrrhenian or Ionian, but from this position, yikes. That's why I, I would put Italy Italy last. Yep, I think I agree. Um, and yeah, the, the, just an Italian fleet there would have been so nice. It can still attack the Austrian. It could go it to go the Adriatic Tunis. or something, or it could go for Tunis, yeah. Right, um, Tunis is Austrian right now, I guess. That's important. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. It's like you don't see that very often, or as often as you would expect. Um, yeah, usually it's actually Naples that gets captured. Yeah, and I, I'm i actually... Well, I mean, I know why he didn't capture Naples that turn. It was to try and get the Italian back on side, right? <laughs> yeah, they say, oops, oops, the juggernaut's real. Uh... But, yeah, the, clearly his attempt to get the Italian back on side hasn't worked. 
Maybe. And then we're getting next level. It's going to be um, Tunis to Ionian, Rome to Naples, and we just have the latest Lepanto you've ever seen. Con <laughs> retreats into a GNC, and then boom, we're there. Yeah, well, he can't retreat into the Aegean Sea. There's a uh, potentially, there's yeah, a but Aegean Sea is going to take Greece, right? Like, uh, yeah, you gotta get on possible. the right level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I, sorry, I was, I was I, joking. <laughs> I would be so hyped if they pulled off a uh, a Lepanto here. Like, I was actually thinking that when they built the army, but I thought it was too dumb to mention because it's. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's absolutely it's too dumb happen. to mention for but, some people who have standards. <laughs> We, we lost those standards a while ago on this show. Um, how many times have we discussed people disbanding a unit or waving a build when they clearly shouldn't wave, right? Once, once you've done that, the threshold is dropped. The bar is too low. Yep. Okay, um, in the West. In the West, right? So, so we, have, we know the, ratio, the relative ratio between Italy and Austria. Austria is ahead of Italy. Yep. Where, how do we feel about France and England? I want to just say it's a tie. Um because it's too crazy but i really i want to give the edge to england man really? if i hadn't seen how france has defended this whole game i would give england such a strong edge but you have you have seen how france has defended france this france has game. just done so well like yeah i don't know i i'm gonna no i refuse england is doing better than france at this point in the game that is my statement that is my stance hard stance you know the good thing for me, is that I have control of the power rankings here, so I'm going to put France above England anyway. <laughs> well, well, okay. So now we have to this fun disagreement. All right, England, I'm rooting for you, buddy. Prove me so right. Do it. The the important <laughs> thing in my eyes is just that England has such an incentive to turn on Germany here. I think and work with France. And if if France and England work out some kind of an agreement here, I think France is in a better spot just based on the fact that they're France. Um. Well, they have an extra dot, right? That's why they're doing better. Yeah, England can't... Uh, well... <laughs> England can't break into Norway. They can barely break into, uh, like, anything in Scandinavia. They can attack Holland, but then they start losing... Uh, dot. Well, the France basically has a stranglehold against Belgium. Now I'm convincing myself that England shouldn't slide with France. <laughs> Well, I think we'll I think we'll figure out what happens when we look at the next moves. I believe we have yeah. our finished power ranking. Okay, wait, is and, Austria sorry, below we put, England? We, we, yeah, 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 yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Sorry, so Austria. Got, uh, you are in fact Austria. McNamara in France in fourth. Uh, we've got Catcher Hunter Catcher in uh, fifth on England. Although Ezio disagrees with me on those two, we'll see who's right. Um, Always more fun when there's something at stake. Just, right? just so we're clear, Captain Meme is the one who went through and put all these games into the into the Imgur album, so he knows <laughs> what happens. So maybe arguing with him isn't the wisest decision, hmm. but I have principles. <laughs> I should say, I don't actually pay any attention to the game when I do that. So. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, no cheating involved here. Nope. Look. You, you're a man of ethics. Yep. Full, he, he really is. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's um, let's go look at some okay. next ones. Uh, and yeah, Austria is uh, Liam Stokes in sixth, and then we have uh, Trotter in seventh on Italy. Right, so let's have a look here. And Italy oh. and what? What am I saying? Oh, England look at and me. Germany. Yep. Look at me go. They have stuck oh. together. <laughs> oh, look at me! Wait. Look at me! Just like what? nail it. How did Look at England this. get back into Norway? Look at this. Oh, that should oh. not have happened. Maybe Ezio knows a thing or two about things every now and then. Maybe he's not full of, I want completely to full of it. I think these <laughs> yeah, you players can recount colluded. two years from now. Two years from now, you can change it, buddy. You're stuck until then. So, uh, so England ends up in Norway because Russia said, "There's no way they're going after Norway. I've got three units on it," and they said, yep. <laughs> "Boom." Um, unfortunately, Norway cannot be held. Um, unfortunately for the for the English player, who is now my 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 favorite horse in this race, um, Russia can still recapture it. I don't understand why Russia did this. Right, they could have just moved Saint Petersburg to Norway with support. If um, um if oh god, that seems oh, like it, just a complete Strictly mistake. Strictly better. Yeah, that's yeah. a strict improvement. Um, 
the, is there, maybe they're showing some support. No, 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 no. that's just a mistake. That's just there's, that's there's just no oops. Good reason for this, right? That's that's bad. Um, that's punishing too. Yep. Uh, uh, what else is yikes. happening on the board here? So, um, England supported Gascony into Spain. Yep. Um, England got into English Channel, and Germany got into Burgundy. France, meanwhile, needed to pull Burgundy back into Marseille, moved Paris into Gascony, and didn't recapture Mid-Atlantic Ocean or bounce English Channel. This is just... Yeah. France's position is looking rough. It's painful. There wasn't anything France could have done to to uh, stop Marseille. Uh, what am I saying? To stop Spain being taken here? Um. Wait. There. Well, there was right. Hypothetically, there was right. Brest to Mid Atlantic. Oh, Ocean, Brest to Mid Atlantic, and then Par- Port- Portugal to Spain. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that would have um, done. Um, it wouldn't have handled Gascony. Yeah. And by virtue of being in Marseille and Gascony. Um, Spain can be recaptured. Um, so that's that's not necessary. Like, <laughs> France's position suddenly looks very bad. Um, well, let's uh, let's be frank here. That's that's what's happened. I think it might amount to only a minus one on the year. I think. Maybe they they have lost Burgundy and English Channel, but yeah, there's no two units that can coordinate except. Uh, no, there are units that can coordinate. You can coordinate Spain and Burgundy to try and take Marseille. You can coordinate uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean with Spain to try and take Portugal. You could coordinate English Channel with Mid-Atlantic Ocean to try and take Brest here. Um, so if you do the hypothetical move set of Portugal to Spain, Gascony to Spain, Brest to English Channel... Marseille supports Gascony to Spain. And Picardy cuts Burgundy, right? Um, just for... Uh, Picardy cuts... Burgundy, yeah. There's no reason. Picardy is getting cut anyways. Well, yeah, it's to stop the Spain being pulled out to Marseille, I guess. If you do a move sequence like that, Burgundy cuts Marseille, so you don't retake Spain, and English Channel and Mid-Atlantic coordinate for Brest. Well, that doesn't work. Hmm... It's a bad what spot. if Portugal? What about Portugal moves to Spain with support from Gascony and Marseille? Uh, I think that does. And then you need to have Picardy cut Burgundy. Yeah, I think that does that's... it. Because now you either lose basically Mid Atlantic Ocean picks something to capture, right? Mid Atlantic Ocean could help take Brest or Portugal. Or support hold Spain. Mid Atlantic Ocean gets its pick of the one of those three, but oh, Paris is exposed. Yeah, so it's still a guess. Um... I forgot about Paris with the previous one. <laughs> yeah, France is not a not France. <laughs> yep. See what I mean? They just you just can't <laughs> hold it. You just you just can't do it, man. So France is going to be down. Why did why did Tunis I'm, move to North Africa? Yeah, instead of I'm Western interested Red? in that move. I've been waiting to talk about it. <laughs> why? I just I, there is very little reason to be in North Africa rather than Western Mediterranean if you want to influence the western side of the board. So Western Med, I thought was a strictly better territory than North Africa, right? North yep. Africa borders Mid Atlantic Ocean and Tunis, and that's it. Western Med borders Mid Atlantic Ocean and Tunis and a bunch of others. Yep. Uh, yeah, I don't understand. What? Oh, uh, maybe they believe they would have been bounced out of Western Med, but if someone's going to Western Med, then you want to bounce them out if you're in Tunis, right? Because otherwise you're just headed straight back to Tunis again. <laughs> Seems likely. Um. Um. And it didn't go into the Tyrrhenian Sea. Like, I was expecting to see Tyrrhenian Sea, um, but nope. that didn't happen. Hmm. Interesting. Uh... So I guess we'll find out what they're doing with that unit. Is there any reason for it to be in North Africa? I guess it's non-aggressive. It can towards cut Mid Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. Um, That's about it. Maybe it's gonna. Maybe France is gonna be supporting North Africa into Mid Atlantic, or maybe that was the promise. Um, but then you want to be attacking from Western Mid anyways. Whatever. I don't really get it. 
Yeah. It's, it's a weird one. North Africa. This is it, this is a more minor thing, right? The difference between North Africa and Western Med, if they're still going to Mid Atlantic Ocean, it's probably fine. As opposed to like the Russian lack of support into Norway, that's a much bigger deal. Um, so now we look at Italy, where Italy is just trying to take Trieste. Um, failing. It looks like the uh, Austrian and the Turk came to an agreement here. Um, and the Russian. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> because Russia putting that fleet into Romania is great for the Austrian, right? <laughs> they, yeah, the Austrian has no th immediate threats apart from losing Greece, which is still admittedly guaranteed, but everything in this four here... Am I am I hallucinating, or is Greece guaranteed? I believe, isn't there an Austrian army in Serbia now? Yes, but uh, there are also, there's a Turkish fleet in Aegean and a Turkish army in Bulgaria, so they could force Greece without contention, right? Yeah, but then then you're not taking Smyrna, right? I, I assume Constantinople in this position is retreating to Smyrna. Um, that's, that's the move I'm expecting. Yep. Um, so... That's a yikes. Um, and I feel like Italy is really sad now to have built that <laughs> army in Rome. That feels that feels really punishing. It's like, if you had a fleet here, you could be in Ionia and you could be doing something. Why are you in Apulia? It's completely useless. <laughs> uh, but they didn't even try to move it out. They tried to take with Tyrolia. Um, which is... Yeah... That's yeah, just painful. Germany just pulled out of Galicia. Yep. Uh, I guess they just didn't want to be involved to that degree. May uh, it did look like they were in Galicia by accident. Uh, the in the last well when they moved in there. Um, because like you probably wouldn't expect to get in there. Uh, and Cilicia is a nice place for them to just sit it out and like have some influence still without being so involved. <laughs> It seems like Russia thought Ukraine, um, thought Galicia was more anti-Russian with these moves. I get the impression Russia's planning on recapture, on forcing Galicia while, while stopping a retreat into Ukraine. Yeah, that's the reason why you would move to Ukraine here. Um, and actually moving back, I think the Russian position has gotten incredibly bad this phase. So where's your growth now? <laughs> You just lost Norway, uh, which was completely preventable, and you've put a fleet in Romania, which means your only growth option is against the Turk, who is in Black Sea, uh, and can quite easily retaliate. Yeah. Mm. I think these power rankings have gone out of date quite quickly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, Germany as number two, it was the thing, but that's probably going to be number one pretty soon. Yep, I would say so too. Uh, Want to look at the fall? Yeah, anything else to say on this one? Probably not. Um, so let's... I want to see, I want to see how unlucky or how lucky France gets. Okay, to the fall we go. This is not the fall, this is retreats. Um, Smyrna, as Smyrna. you said. That just makes sense. Retreating to Ankara leaves the only potential retreat option being Armenia, and at that point you're just forcing your fleet into a completely useless spot. If it goes to Smyrna, at least it can go to Eastern Med and start moving back towards Tunis. Uh, so, let's go forward. That's a lot of red moves. So we had Gascony move to Spain. Marseille supports the move to Spain. We had Portugal... Also supporting the move to Spain. Brest supports Mid-Atlantic from North Africa, just as we expected. And English Channel cut that support. Um, but because North Africa was cutting Mid-Atlantic... Um, no, there actually was no reason to cut Mid-Atlantic because Spain was already cut. So that didn't do anything. But because Marseille didn't end up in Spain, Burgundy didn't end up in... In Marseille, and Picardy bounced. So this is all... Everything is staying stationary. France down one. Yep. Um, because Spain was in there. English Channel taps breast. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is an interesting one. You'd think... Were they really expecting the move on Portugal to work? Nothing to tap Spain? That seemed very unlikely. Uh, but it is all a guessing game on this front. 
and France had good guesses again, not protecting Paris. Um, worked out for them. Yeah, this is the problem with attacking France, right? Even if you're in this uh, EG alliance, it takes forever. Yeah, although France losing a unit is pretty critical here. Um... Mm, what does it take off? Uh, Brest? I want to say Brest because Picardy is actually a lot more useful than it looks. If you disband Picardy, you... Well, Picardy can defend Brest or Paris. Brest is just kind of stuck defending Brest. Um... Yeah, and now that you have that Austrian fleet in North Africa potentially helping out, I think the fleet is a lot less important, but... Yeah. Still, still important. Um... Hmm. hmm. Yeah, that's a tough to spend. And it, another interesting thing to consider, is this Italian unit going to Piedmont to help or to hinder the French player? Um... Like, is it just that there's a dot grab? <laughs> or is it there to stop the CG rolling? Um, and actually, Italy moving that there seems to have worked against them because Austria just takes Tirolia right back again. <laughs> yeah. And Italy is stuck in their homeland. I think this might actually work out for Italy, though, because it might make it easier for them to work with Austria. They can disband Tyrolia and build a fleet. That's true. Uh, they can't build, can they? Because they lost Constantinople. Um, they um, can disband Smyrna, right? And they can have a fleet back in Naples. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, whereas if there was no disband of Tyrolia, that fleet would be stuck in Eastern Med. And I think Italy would much rather have a fleet in Naples in this particular point. Yeah. Uh, I think that makes sense. I think taking off Tyrolia and Smyrna is actually the right move here. Um, leaves you with Piedmont and Apulia that can successfully defend um, Venice against the Austrian attack as long as Austria doesn't like rotate into Piedmont, Tyrolia and Trieste. Even then it can't because like, you, you would be supporting Apulia up. Um, but yeah. Uh, so... Oh, we do see the Turk walk into Greece. Um, yes. Which, man, I, I am liking the Turkish position here. <laughs> Plus one, baby. Yeah. Um, Plus one in a corner, has the Black Sea, fleet in Khan, fleet in Aegean. I'm not sure if we'll see a fleet in an army, Inc. No longer has the Black Sea, right? <laughs> Uh, you're right. No longer has the Black Sea because the fleet's in Khan. Man, I wish fleets duplicated whenever they moved. That'd be <laughs> nice. They leave behind a mirror image. That's a fun variant. Uh... Every time a unit moves, it just duplicates itself. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. We... Yep. I feel like that's not diplomacy anymore. We're going to be talking about, like, some virus game. Yep, we got a Zerg rush. Um, but, like, but... yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so... And Germany gets to build still. Ger Germany takes Spain. Yeah, oh, they get not. another build. Um, what happened in Scandinavia here? England um, loses Norway Sweden again. Tapped, yes, um, Skagerrak tapped Sweden, and Russia took Norway. Okay, so uh, it, Russia finally took our advice and, and supported a move into Norway. I say finally, we gave that advice last turn, but uh, yes. The... The, this was the obvious move set here, right? Because you can't guarantee Sweden. Um, yeah, I would have been interested to see Skagrak into Norway with strength, um, with double support. Um, but Skagrak is useful. This move from St. Petersburg is more focused on getting Sweden, but it leaves a little more exposure on the mainland. Yeah, uh, it's not St. Petersburg moving, it's Finland, which means that. I guess Russia is trying to cut a deal with uh, with Excuse Germany. Me. You're because... absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I'm not used to reading this new this yep. new interface. <laughs> it's a bit different for us. Um, not conspiracy players necessarily, but uh, yeah, I think it's easier to tell once you get used to it. Um, but yeah, this probably m makes it uh, makes Russia quite an well, not an appealing ally to Germany, but 
more appealing than they would be if they were in Finland and Norway. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> and North Sea is open. Although I guess it's going to be retreated into, so it's not. Would you have valued taking uh, North Sea here as Russia instead of taking nope. Norway? Nope. Nope. That's... But, oh, I suppose England would have got a build in that case. So that's... <laughs> it's not that's... as good. But, like, North Sea is so strong. Dots. Uh, <laughs> that's man, fair. get your dots in the fall, man. This is... This is the fall. I want to build. I don't want my enemy to have a build. Because, hypothetically, I take North Sea. I have to lose a unit elsewhere. Like, say, Ukraine. Maybe yep. in this case, Fleet Romania is not that bad, but England just gets to build a fleet and then kick me out of North Sea in the fall or in the spring next turn. Like that's yep. dots, man. Okay, that's all right. Fair. I want to look at some retreats real quick. Let's just make sure we see where all the units are. Jump ahead to retreats, then. Uh, hey, look, Norway retreats to the North Sea. Yeah, and I'm we shocked. had the Italian units retreating, not uh, disbanding. Not yet. off the board. Hmm. So well. I expect to see Eastern Med get pulled off the board and Italy say, I am never leaving my peninsula. Please don't use any units that are fleets against me. <laughs> that would be... Yeah, I feel like that would just end Italy's chances there, right? Because they're never going to get a build if they do that. Um, yeah, but are they going to keep Eastern Med instead of Piedmont, Venice, or Apulia? I mean, Eastern I Med can they move to. to Ionian Sea. Uh, but you would have thought that disbanding the two units and then rebuilding at Naples would have been better for that because then if you do get bounced out of Ionian Sea, you're not in a completely useless location. <laughs> yep, but we're just going to be stuck in Eastern Med for the entire game and not, not mm. do anything. What I would like to see is Italy going down to their three units just in their homeland, um, their three armies, and then somehow managing to get someone to convoy them out. <laughs> convoy them to Tunis? I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. Uh, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, so, uh, shall we move ahead to builds? Let's do it. See yep. more German armies. So, Apulia does come off here. Apulia came off, and Brest came off. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. Uh, and Fleet Anchor. Natural. I mean... Yeah, it has to be, right? If you're saying you're still working with Russia, then you build Fleet Ankara, because Army Ankara is very, uh, well, Difficult Russia Difficult to is... use when you already have Army Smyrna. Yep. This also leaves the option of the um, Austria-Turkey alive. So, are we going to see a rat? It's possible... That's the... We might not, we, we already have a rat, don't we? We have the we have the Russian yes. fleet in Romania, and we have Bulgaria vacant, and Austria just took Serbia because they needed to switch its its color to red, and I expect Serbia <laughs> can just leave. Yeah. So, r rat for people not up to date on diplomacy terminology is the Russia Austria Turkey alliance that you never see, except when Austria gets vassalized <laughs> and pushed out ahead of the other two. Uh, which seems to be kind of what's happening. Um, and it might actually be in Austria's interest to do that, because... The alternative is death, the, as it yeah. usually is. <laughs> <laughs> the, Austria isn't under any sort of immediate threat of elimination, mainly because the Turkish armies aren't anywhere near. Um, but Turkey can, like, convoy Smyrna over to Bulgaria or something. In there. Those, those armies are going to get there eventually. Um, it, they, you can't really stop it. In fact, I expect a convoy to Bulgaria is super likely this turn no matter what. Um, <laughs> uh, but then, then it does trap the, the Turkish fleets in. Uh, so... Um, Khan still moves to Smyrna. Oh yeah, okay. Actually, yeah, that does make sense. You convoy Smyrna over to Bulgaria and move Constantinople to Smyrna behind it, and Ankara through to Constantinople if you want to be very allied with the Russian, or Ankara up to Black Sea if you want to be like, here's a knife at your back, go do something else or I'll stab you. <laughs> something like that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I still... As Turkey, I would be considering trying to work with the... Austrian against the Russian, I think, while that fleet in Romania is there, because you can't really do the opposite. Um, 
I don't understand why the Russia why the Russian went to Prussia. What was the point of that? He's not particularly a fan of Germany. Well, yeah, that makes sense. But it has just demolished Russia's ability to move against Austria here. Um, True, but if he, if it's a rat, you don't need to, and there might be Austrian armies in Bohemia and Tyrolia soon. So. That's true. Yeah. Uh, shall we move on? Or do you want to cool, talk cool, about cool. the fleet breast disbandal? Nah, I think we already discussed that, right? It was just bad choices. Every move was bad for the French, and I expect to see him collapse very quickly from here. All right, uh, let's move on to the spring then. Um, okay. And he just didn't, right? France just just held it again. Yep. Uh, well, they did get their fleet force disbanded in Portugal. France would have actually managed to protect that if Austria had made the move. Oh, um, excuse me, excuse me. That support was for a non-existent move. Yep. I see, I see. So it still shows the move on the board, even though the move didn't happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a grey arrow if the move didn't happen, and a coloured arrow in the country's colour if it did. Um, so... It's a little bit more intuitive for most people, I think, just because uh, on Backstabber it will show a random line and you have to kind of guess where it's going. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, because um, because Portugal has popped, France has no more fleets. Oh. Italy's in Marseille. I didn't notice yep. that. Um, yep. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> What? The, sorry. Okay. I just um. Yeah. France is now. France is in bad shape. Without any fleets, they're just gonna die to the fleet in English Channel and Mid Atlantic. Mm. Um. That's. It is yep. over now, for Death them. Fleet support is gone. Uh. Yeah. So that was a a valiant defense, and it looks like it's gonna have died. Like, the problem is, it doesn't look like the rest of the map was was gonna come to his rescue ever. I think Russia tried, but failed. Um, I mean, we had Austria helping out with one fleet, and we saw the Italian maybe moving in to help out with an army, but now they're not. They're just dossing instead. instead. They're just trying to um, get the growth. Um, yeah. So we see Turkey manage to hold all of their units. Um, <laughs> yep. I so I proposed a move that I really liked, actually. Um, and Turkey just said, nah. Um... Yikes. Well, Yikes. Um, so... <coughs> and now Austria's back in Tunis, so... The Austria and the Italian might be able to work together to defend Ionian for a long time. Tyrolia moved to Vienna. Yeah, and uh, Budapest got into Galicia, and Trieste is in Budapest. And Ukraine moved away from Warsaw, so I think the Austrian house remaining guaranteed, right? Um, uh -huh. Looks like it. This is not an RAT. <laughs> yeah, Austria said, screw the rat. Yeah, Germany's on my side. <laughs> there's literally no unit that can support Romania right now. They all it's, moved away or really didn't cool, get yeah. Um, yeah, and like, if, if, if Turkey had convoyed into Bulgaria from Smyrna, this is so much less of an issue. Um, because you can attack Serbia with strength too. Like that's true. It would have been a lot better. And I don't understand why Eastern Med moved to Aegean here. That seems like a bad move. Um, with uh, the possibility of Aegean moving to Ionian, and you're not even moving something down to cover Naples. Um, th but obviously, it made no difference in the current scenario and it wouldn't have made any difference if we'd gone with the well if turkey had gone with your proposed move set of uh convoying up to yeah. bulgaria with well with then support. the difference would be the fleets in ionian instead of eastern med and ionian's a better place to be yeah um After, maybe they are trying to set up the law panto with the austrian fleet coming into ionian here <laughs> maybe dude and they're gonna get the austrian fleet in ionian if they try right eastern med can support that move and there's only one fleet on ionian at the moment Yep. And there's nothing bordering Eastern Med, so like, yeah, this is, um, yikes. <laughs> uh, Turkey's position went from very good 
to, I believe, awful because of a single a single bad move sequence. Yeah, it should be said, Turkey isn't losing anything here because... No, Well, but... or for a long time even, because they're Turkey and they have a bunch of units crammed in here. Um, yes, but... But they're all fleets. <laughs> they're not getting anywhere anytime soon, and their position lost the ability to improve. Yeah. Um, it used to be they're going to get into Eastern Med, then get into Ionian, and then start crunching along. But instead, they're going to get stuffed for uh, years, years on years. Yep. And Austria is going to be growing, which is going to make the stuffing worse. And then Russia is going to collapse before Italy, before Turkey breaks out. So, it, it, yeah. All right. Uh, Germany's number one, right? Germany wins the game. We, we, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, and Germany making use of that Cilicia army to uh, to like influence the other side of the board. Yep, get the get the Austrian into Galicia. It didn't actually change anything here, but it would have done if if the Russian had bounced in Galicia. Um, yep. I don't know if that's the side that Germany wants to be supporting now that the Italy Austria is gaining some momentum. Italy getting Marseille. I don't know that it's Italy Austria yet. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we, I don't know if we can go that far. <laughs> oh, let's see, I suppose. I I really do think this is Italy Austria because the backing out of Tyrolia that's not protecting of uh, of Venice. Um, although I I think uh, the Italian would have been better, like with this Eastern Med to Aegean uh, move, they would have been better moving Venice to Apulia and just putting their trust in the Austrian here because they were already not supporting it. Um, and yes. they would have been able to defend Naples against the Turkish attack that way. Uh, but I it, agree. it's fine, uh, as it Worked turned out. out. Um, obviously, we don't see the negotiations. Maybe the Italian knew that the Turk was not moving to the Ionian Sea. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> From a purely tactical perspective, I think Venice to Apulia would have been better. Is there a universe where Turkey... Is going to stab Russia next turn? Where uh, this was all Turkey just saying, I'm going to fake being bad? That's possible, actually. We got we can have Smyrna to Armenia, Ankara to Black Sea. Um, but you could have done all that this turn. Yeah, and then you would have been in position on the fall, so it, it's... Uh... Yeah, take the take Romania or Sev. I don't... That, no. Sorry, I was... Sorry, I thought about it because I realized this was a... A, a, a move sequence where everything bounces if France does one move, which is a telltale sign in full press games of someone who wants to make a stab and wants to keep their units in position to a stab, um, but wants to wait a turn. But I don't mm. I don't think that makes sense here. Yep. Uh, shall we have a quick look at Scandinavia up here? With something we, I think, didn't notice, this German uh, fleet build. Did I, oh, I, I, I miss I, putting I, I the fleet on? I think we mentioned it, but we, yeah. But did we talk about why? Like, I mean, it's clearly in being in Berlin. It's not anti-English, but it is that excuse to get that second fleet on the board that uh, could Absolutely. allow him to stab the Englishman later. Um, but in the meantime, it's going to be fighting for Sweden and going after Saint Pete. Um, yeah, in Scandinavia, we observed a very nice guess slash play from England and Germany against Russia. Um, and I believe they forced the disband of the fleet in Skagerrak, yep. where so many fleets go to die. <laughs> yeah, because no potential retreat options here. The, um, the move against Sweden didn't work, uh, and it doesn't cut the support because it's against the uh, uh, support against itself right um england vacating north again but there's nothing anywhere nearby to threaten it so that's fine that's probably going to work to their advantage in in stabilizing the cg in a way because suddenly they're not in a position to stop <laughs> uh that just makes germany even stronger man um and they can't actually take norway Still. <laughs> uh, Hilarious. M wow. Yeah. They can take it next year, once Baltic Sea gets to Bothnia. Yes, that's true. Um, or if English Channel goes up to north now that um, 
Well, no, you want to be taking Brest, right? I think I think England still plans on taking centers. Yeah, England is probably going to get centers here, probably out of France quicker than they're going to get them out of Russia. But it's possible they draw level with Germany. Germany still has the advantage right now, I think. Isn't England on four dots and Germany's on six, I believe? Or is England up to seven? Yeah. Or Germany up to seven? Oh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Seven, seven for yeah. Germany. Whereas only four for England, so it's going to take a bit. But it's important to note that as long as Germany isn't building fleets, uh, England is like the safer, the much safer power in this alliance. Um, yeah, it's it's suspicious how Germany built a fleet last turn. Yep. Huh. Interesting. Worth noting. Pocket save that for later. Yeah. Have we got anything else to talk about here? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think Austria and Italy are going to work together. I I think they are. Uh, cool. What, are you expecting, no like, way. Venice to Trieste happening here, or...? I'm expecting some nonsense. Alright. <laughs> Tunis to West... Tunis to Western Med, okay? Tunis to Western Med. Right. I, I really hope they go with the, the Lepanto play. Oh, it would be so sweet. Ionian it would be so Combo. sweet. Venice to Ionian, support <laughs> in Tunis to Ionian, and then, boom. But, like... Would be beautiful. That'd be so sweet. I Come love on. it. Alright, let's look at it. I want to see. I want to see. Oh, no! Look at me go. Look at me go. Look at that move. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Tunis to Western Med. As predicted. You had the opportunity to do something great. It could have been. And Turkey is stabbing. Turkey is stabbing oh, Russia. Turkey is stabbing. But with the fleet in Bulgaria. Well, I, I suppose Austria is coast, taking Romania, coast. so it's fine. Um, yeah. So yeah. Sev is going to go to the Turk. So Turkey said, okay, Austria, you know you're getting Romania for free here. I'm just going to jump on board with you and take what gains I can, and then hopefully you go after Italy instead of me, right? Um, Something like that. It's probably in Austria's interest. Well, I mean, it, they could have they could have pulled off this Lepanto. Why? Why yeah. would you not? I think this is better for uh, Austria. It might um, be. Uh, although hypothetically, you can do both. You can still take Romania, still tell the Turk you're attacking, you're attacking Russia, but then just move into Ionian and ask the Italian to support you in there. And suddenly, the Turk has vacated a GNC, um, pissed off their ally, and you're you're in great shape. I think that would have been the ideal move sequence. Yeah, um, but still, this is a long way up from where, uh, like, o Austria is in a very good spot now, right? <laughs> um, especially considering they were down to essentially three, technically four, plus uh, with the Tunis, but <laughs> three in their homeland. Um, the, like, Tunis has been completely isolated from everything else they've been doing to the extent that it isn't even going to Tyrrhenian here when Austria is presumably not working with the Italian against the Turk. Um. <laughs> I, I, Something like that. I wonder what Austria is planning to do with Western Med. I imagine just prop up the French player. Um, Pour Italy into Spain. Maybe get supported by Italy into Spain. That's possible. Uh, uh. So France is down Marseille, Portugal, Brest, plus Spain. So down two. Yep. Um, Man, what a fight. What a fight. They're still surviving, but uh, it doesn't look like for very long because... Turns out when two countries fight you for the entire game, it's, it's too much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, England and Germany have not shifted on this alliance at all. Nope. Um, just, just hard fighting against France. Yep. Cool. Uh, so... so, Scandinavia... We see uh, Norway being protected, as expected. Um, there's no way England can get that until another fleet gets up there. Uh, in Russia Which here... Which is probably next year. Germany gets into Warsaw. That is something I didn't notice until just that second. Um, it, was, um, it was guaranteed. Yep, because uh, Baltic cut 
Prussia, which now leaves Baltic in a weird position in Prussia, but I think it's worth it if you get Warsaw out of it. Uh, man, that's a that's really good for Germany. I wonder, like, is that really in Austria's interest to do? <laughs> Given the Germany-England alliance is already so strong in the north here, um, and presumably you're moving to Western Mediterranean to counter it to some degree. Perhaps not. Perhaps you're there to support Germany into, into Spain again. That's possible. Like, surely at this point... Well, I guess maybe the strategy is just to make Germany look so strong that England has to stab them, right? Yeah, it's just difficult to stab when Germany's up to two fleets, right? Yeah. <laughs> is Although, uh, they still have free access to Holland. I say that, no they don't, because they got into Picardy. Um, hmm... They are presumably going to build a fleet and backfill North Sea in an attempt to take Norway. And if you're in the North Sea and Skagerrak already, then the stab where we just described earlier, where North Sea goes to Helgoland Bight, and English Channel backfills North Sea and Mid-Atlantic goes to English Channel, that, that approach, something like that could still work. I just think it's way more likely they work together and kill, kill France and wait for at least another year. Yeah. Uh... Oh. I got confused on my screen. I didn't see any more moves after this. I thought this was the final sequence, and I got really, really confused. And then I see <laughs> load 27 more images, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> there we go. Now, that well, makes more sense. Well, you know sense. how many more phases there are now, I suppose. I would I probably need to do mental math, and I don't feel like it. Yeah, it would also require you to know which phases had retreats and which didn't. So, um, Yeah, I don't think there's a ton more to talk about here. It looks like... I mean, we could be seeing an Italy-Austria-Turkey alliance coming out of this. I haven't seen that one in a very long time. Yeah. It would be an alliance of necessity more than anything because the German is so strong. But Austria is making the German even stronger. So... Yeah. Maybe Austria doesn't go for that alliance. Maybe they are just trying to, like, pump Germany to the degree that England stabs them. We're gonna pump... You up. <laughs> well, shall we move on? Yeah, let's look at the retreats and builds, eh? Yep, and then we will do power rankings. Finally, we will be able to change my mistakes. <laughs> um, so, All right. Russia disbands uh, Warsaw and Romania. Romania makes sense to disband. You don't want that oh, fleet so there. Russia's giving um, up, right? Oh, uh, wait, hang on. This means they get a build, right? Um, because they have one, two, three, four, they only yes, have three units on the board. So, given that Romania is coming off no matter what, because it's a pointless unit to have a fleet here, it, it, it's worse than an army in every respect, it does make sense to just blow up Warsaw and say, okay, I get a choice of where I'm rebuilding it now, instead of just having to retreat into Moscow. But I wouldn't be surprised to see it rebuilt in Moscow anyway. <laughs> Yeah, the other option would be St. Pete, right? Yep, just go so all in on protecting the fleet the south coast St. Pete to say we're going to hold Scandinavia till the day we die. Yeah, make a push for Sweden. Could be Army St. Pete, just support hold Norway for, for a bit, but I think the fleet St. Pete south coast is probably a little cleaner. Yep. Um, little, shall we move to builds? Sure. Okay, you are correct. It's a fleet on the south coast of St. Petersburg. Um, so Russia just giving up Moscow and Sevastopol, which is fair because they can't hold Sevastopol and, like, Moscow they could probably hold. Well, they they would be able to hold for a bit at least, but going in on uh, Scandinavia and giving them some stronghold to hold out in does give them a chance of getting back in the game, whereas being on one supply center in Moscow wouldn't. <laughs> Yeah, if the rebuilding the army Moscow has the advantage, if you can convince the Austrians to stab Germany, you're in much better position, because you can support yourself into Warsaw, and then Galicia can go into Silesia, Vienna to Bohemia, Trieste to Tyrolia, and Austria can get this very potent move against the German. Um, but if Russia thought that wasn't happening, then this is probably the best way to stall for a while, it feels bad, because Scandinavia is ultimately hopeless as well. Mm. England is going to get into the North Sea, and so Scandinavia is lost, but... Bad decisions, do it the best you can. 
you have to go all in on the fact that England might stab Germany, right? Sure. And if that happens, then yes, in fact, you're in, you're in, you're going to be holding out Norway, Sweden, and Saint Pete for, for a long time. Yep. I just think that's unlikely. I think England is going to say, "Wait, so you're telling me I can take Norway? Oh, cool. I'm going to take Norway." <laughs> uh, Italy is setting up their own Lepanto, maybe, or just going for Tunis, which actually would make more sense, maybe. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, shall we do power rankings? Sure. All right, France, to the bottom with you. <laughs> uh, feels so bad. Uh, yep. I mean, sometimes that just happens. You you can't negotiate your way out of something. Um, the yeah, that's rough. And tactically, it's been a fantastic uh, run, but I think McNamara is not long for this world. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So, are we going second from... to last? Yeah. Going I'm going to say Italy. I think bottom up makes the most sense. I think it's just got to be Italy. Um, um, you're staring down a three fleet Turkey, even though Turkey is not um, going after you immediately. I think it's going to happen. Would Russia not be? Russia well, would be you know the other what, person you know I'd what? be talking about. You know what? I'll put I'll put Russia. I'll put, I agree with you. Let's put Russia below yeah. Italy. I agree. Actually. Okay. I think down from number one. Two number six. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, Russia. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, Yikes. And I, I think a big part of this is just not supporting St. Petersburg to Norway on that turn and losing it to England. Uh, <laughs> that one was huge. It stalled it out. And the, the, the Russia and Turkey's fates were linked pretty tightly. Um, and then he threw it away. It seemed like he went too hard against Germany instead of committing to crushing Austria first. Yep. Um, with, like, him moving into Prussia and moving out of his army out of Romania, these moves made it impossible to attack Austria. Um, and then, and then he didn't make, he couldn't grow anymore, I think. Yep. Uh, especially when we look at um, him putting his fleet into Romania, I think that is uh, also a key point, just not being able to move against Austria at all. Uh, it's not necessarily just that he moved against Germany, it's specifically that he hampered his own ability to, to move against Austria, and that makes you much less appealing ally to Turkey. Um, I would say this kind of situation was sort of inevitable after that point. Uh, not necessarily inevitable, because there was always the Russia-Austria-Turkey chance <laughs> that we were talking about. But even there, I think Turkey eventually stabs. Uh, and, you know. Yeah, but much later. Yep. Okay, yeah, so I think it's Austria, or it's France last, then Russia, I think, then Italy, and then Austria. Okay. Would be um, from the bottom up. And yeah. then between Germany, England, and Turkey. I guess I would put Turkey third, England second, Germany first. Hmm. I could see putting these guys in any in any of the combinations. Yeah, I would uh, put Anderson first in Germany. That's um, That makes sense. We've got uh, Turkey and England I'm not sure about. Because England's got to contest with Germany, right? <laughs> and that's a big thing to contest with, whereas Turkey has um, a bunch of minor powers, essentially, around them. And, yeah, if those minor powers unite, it's, it's not going to be great for Turkey, and they're not in the best spot with that fleet in Bulgaria to push any kind of advantage right now. But they are also Turkey, so late game they can... <laughs> they can push out of that box pretty well. Um... But I, given I what happened that. last time, I I, uh, I <laughs> forced my own power rankings in here. I'm going to put England in second this time. And my feeling is Turkey that England third. doesn't have to worry much about Germany. Um, the way this alliance has been set up, it's, I think, very difficult for Germany to attack England. And I think in the natural flow where England takes Norway, England is going to have the 
much more potent stab position. Yes, that's probably true. It depends a lot on uh, how aware and astute uh, Germany is about that stab potential. You can't really build a third fleet as Germany while in this EG. It just tells England that you're planning to stab them. Um, which is, I mean, it was good that he got the second fleet on the board when he did, even if it's ended up in Prussia, because it can eventually be used. Yeah, I know, that second fleet was, was really important for England, if, if, for Germany. If Germany doesn't have that second fleet, um, I think England would be dominating this alliance. Um, I think Germany wouldn't be able to answer, because Denmark, Kiel, Holland, Portugal are all centers that Germany simply couldn't fight for. Yep. Um, but with that second fleet being able to move into Baltic, if England is aggressive, the war between Germany and England will still be England-sided, I believe. Um, but in the long term, there is much more potential for for retaliation and for, for it to be slowed down. But I, ultimately, I do think that England is in a better position than Turkey. Yeah, and Germany is probably in the best position overall, because if there is still that potential for Germany to stab England, if they get a big turn and get two builds and stick two fleets down, um, and I, I see that being a possibility. I don't know that it's a possibility immediately. <laughs> and Germany is still adjacent to Belgium, which is useful. That's a center to take if you're planning on stabbing. Yep. Um, it's a good way to start it. You make sure England doesn't get a build while you build two fleets and suddenly you've got four fleets to England's four and as Germany you're in okay shape. Yep. Um, the inherent vulnerability of Portugal relative to the rest of Germany's position is um, worth paying attention to. Hmm. Portugal can't, will not be held by Germany in a war against England. Well, it depends what happens in Spain, right? Because you can't take Portugal without getting into Spain. Um, if, I assume Spain is falling. If Austria and Italy work together to take Spain, or if the the German works with the Austrian to take Spain, I think there is some potential that he just sets up an invulnerable position in there. <laughs> yeah, but when England's got complete naval control around Spain, Spain is still going to fall. Mm, eventually, the, yeah, that's true. Um, so it would need to be that Germany makes this hyper-aggressive move against England and can take multiple centers away, but I that seems unlikely to me. Yeah. All right. Um, so with power rankings done there, um, I will just fix the alignments on some of these. They look a bit off. Uh, but yeah, that that is our power rankings for this phase. Um, let's move on to the spring of 1905. And Germany gets, uh, Moscow for free, which was guaranteed because of the fleet build. Um, Russia walks into Warsaw behind, but Germany walks into Cilicia behind, so maybe Germany will be able to pick up Warsaw back again as well. Uh. Seems pretty likely. And... Austria, I assume, setting up for... Well, it looks like they're setting up for a big anti-Turkey uh, turn. Um, moving into Albania and Ukraine. But it could equally be anti-German. Um, the Albania move is not quite anti-German. Well, okay, yes. <laughs> the, uh, the Ukraine move could be anti-German. The Ukraine move can do anything. It's when you look at them, hold the moves holistically, that I get the feeling... Um, Germany is fine. Hmm. Uh. In Scandinavia, um, we see a whole bunch of bouncing. Um, yep. Sweden nicely successfully... Nicely done. I assume, I assume Germany was supporting Skagerrak into Sweden. Uh, England... Uh, it looks like England was supporting Denmark into Sweden here. Um... The but yes, yeah, that counters it perfectly. This move to Bothnia definitely counters anything that the St. Petersburg fleet can do. They're just stalling until they can get a, another unit there, but they're not getting yeah. another unit there. You would have expected. Uh, three Baltic sea. Uh, yes, um, that's Prussia's true. moving into the Baltic, which is going to get into Bothnia. 
uh, potentially. That's slow, though. And it's not guaranteed, right? Um, or um, What you could do is you could have Sweden attack Bothnia with support from Baltic Sea, while Skagrak supports Denmark to Sweden. Yep. And you're going to get into Gulf of Bothnia and bounce out of Sweden at worst. Yeah. This is um, still slower than getting English Channel directly in the North Sea, but I suppose Germany said, no, you don't get your fleet in the North Sea. Um, Maybe. Even to take Norway. It seems, yeah, because English Channel seems like just a bad move. There's no reason to be in English Channel here. Um, when you're, if you're planning on pushing around Iberia, if you're planning to get through the stalemate line, is just go through Spain. Um, I suppose it makes sense. But then you're giving up any chance of taking Norway quickly here. Yeah. Um, yep, but from Germany's perspective, that's fantastic. Yep, for sure. So now Germany's going to be the one who gets all of Scandinavia. Yep. Oh, uh, we do see Austria get into Spain here. Spain tries a last-ditch attempt at, at getting the English player to stab the German, but no dice. Unfortunately, all of France's units are off the board now. Yep. Um, that self-bouncing Gascony ensures that both, both of them die. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, England gets Paris, but they also get pulled away from Belgium, which is... Interesting thing to note, they still have English Channel that can defend that, but Germany still has that slab open. Yeah, um, and now to hold Spain, if Germany chooses, if Germany and England work together, Spain is lost. Yeah. Because Portugal, Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and Burgundy can work together to capture Spain. Uh, so that seems pretty likely. Yep. And then based on the fleet moving into English Channel, my assumption would be that England gets Spain. Um, yeah, you would think so. Um, it looks like Naples is setting up to go for Western Med, but it might be just going Tunis. to walk into Tunis, yeah. <laughs> uh, or it goes into Ionian and then Adriatic, and then we see, the, we see Italy and Austria stab each other again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um... Yeah, no, it will be Tunis, right? Because the Italian just, like, puts the Austrian in Greece and then takes Tunis as part of a, the arrangement. That makes sense. Seems likely. So, what was Turkey doing here? Um... Lots of support holds. Um, support, black supports uh, Bulgaria, Bulgaria support Greece, Greece support Bulgaria, Smyrna tries to get out, and Armenia does successfully get out. Oh, and that's because Bulgaria is a useless fleet. That's right. Yes. Of course. Um, nothing they can do with that. Uh, not that they could do a lot anyway. There are three armies If it, three was, armies if it was an army, um, there would have been options. There would have been counterplay here. Um, but because it's a fleet, Serbia is not in any danger. And because it's a fleet on south coast of Bulgaria instead of east coast of Bulgaria, uh, there was no counterplay after Romania either. So this is just... Again, it's Turkey, so it's not that bad, but this was this is not ideal for Turkey. It's gonna be difficult for Turkey to grow in the in the short term. Yep. Uh, that's true, and like uh, I think they do lose Greece here. Um I mean they definitely lose Greece here, right? Greece is looking pretty lost, especially if Austria and Italy continue to work together. Yeah, and Sevastopol is actually probably lost as well, um, because that fleet in Bulgaria's fleet can't support, uh, can't tap Romania or anything. Uh. Yeah, so Black Sea will still um, potentially be support holding Sev, and it depends on the German in Moscow to determine if they want to help Austria into Sev or not. Yeah. Wait, yes, I'm dumb, I forgot there was a fleet in the Black Sea. <laughs> but, uh... Yes. The... Yeah, Greece is probably lost. Bulgaria is soon to follow. But these three centers are quite easy to defend, so you never know. Turns out Smyrna, Khan, and Ankara will probably stick around for a while. Because a unit in Armenia, a unit in Khan, and a unit in Smyrna need fleets in Eastern Med and Aegean to crack. Or armies in Syria. And that's just... Yeah. Or fleets in Black Sea, but none of those are coming, so 
Yeah. Okay. I did want to uh, ask: Would it have been worth England taking what I assume was the French deal here, um, and going for Portugal and going for? Uh, well, no, they wouldn't have gone into Portugal because of the cut from behind, right? So that was pointless. Uh, the move from Paris to Burgundy, interesting. I assume. From Picardy to Bur- from, from, from from Picardy Paris. to Paris. Uh, Paris to Burgundy was a move that France made here. I wonder why. Um, Probably was saying, "Hey, I'll support you to Paris. You support me to Burgundy." Um, and then England gets into North Sea as well. Um, Brest can move out. Brest could move to English Channel. And they would actually be pretty nicely set up against Germany. I was about to say that seems like a bad deal for England because Germany retreats into Belgium, but obviously the retreat doesn't matter if it gets knocked out again immediately. <laughs> Absolutely, and with fleets in English Channel, North Sea, and a French army in Burgundy, and your army is still in Picardy, uh, Belgium is looking very fine. Uh, mm. So yeah, that was a pretty solid proposition to be frank um the the only the reason why i don't think it it would i think it's good for england to not take it is um they can get that position but it's going to be they're only their units later yeah um a lot of these stab possibilities will still be there admittedly later right and so there is value for just making the stab while russia is still on the board right russia is still contesting scandinavia um england could presumably have worked a deal with with Russia where they he, England helps Russia into Sweden. In this case, it would have actually popped Sweden um, because of the bounce in Gulf of Bothnia. And then there's there's push against Denmark, and so Germany would have been really heavily pressed there. But England doesn't take out France in this universe, whereas in the universe where France is gone, England is basically free to stab Germany at their leisure. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I think we are about to say goodbye to our French player, but uh, shall we move on to the fall? And... Yeah, I suppose in theory Paris could hold, right? Paris could <laughs> it's move. possible. <laughs> All right, let's um, move. I think oh. I think that was a really good proposition from the French player. I think that's basically the best the yeah. best proposal you can make. Yeah. Um, and it's a pretty convincing one, honestly, like... Look, I'll give you everything you want, and then once I'm in Burgundy, I'll help you do what you do everything. Then, like, just keep me alive, and I'll maybe retake Marseille in the future. I don't. know. Yeah, I think that was good call. Good call. But doomed to failure. Um, let's move on to the full phase then. Okay, it's, there's surprisingly little going on, or at least Germany supports Italy into Spain. They do. It's interesting. Instead of supporting England into Spain, um, and do they try and make a stab for Belgium, or do you think that's arranged? That's got to be arranged. Yeah, I don't understand why you would support Italy into. Uh, I guess it breaks up the Italy-Austria alliance, right? Yeah, it got Italy to take Trieste as well. And Tunis, oh man, oh man. Italy goes plus three, right? Um, yeah. Didn't we put Italy below Austria? Yes, I think we did. Um, cool. <laughs> that's a big term for Italy. Um, although they are holding two territories on their western front with one unit against a probably unified EG... We'll see how well that goes. Especially less unified. Um, this Sweden to Baltic, Baltic to Denmark, Denmark to Sweden. These moves make me feel weird. I don't understand them. Mm. Um, likely because I'm not a very good player. Um, uh, well, you would never expect that to work, right? Because one of no, no, no. You would expect it to work because Finland is probably support holding Norway. Uh, it didn't. But what's the point? Um, you get your army into Sweden so it can attack Russia's Finland. disbanding. That's the point. You don't have to make process. Um, it, 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 my assumption would be that Russia keeps those three units, but because Russia is losing Sev and Moscow, um, 
you actually don't need to do anything. Russia is going to collapse by itself. Yeah. So you can actually just wait, and it works out. Cool. So he basically just said, I'm going to hold with all my units because I don't particularly care. And if I can get a fleet into Denmark, there's just no way England is happy about that. I mm. feel like that would be instigating England building a fleet London and moving it on sea to be like, sorry, no, nope, you don't. Nope, 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 nope. Um, but instead, this is fine. Germany still is plus one because of Moscow. So. Yep. Um, don't gain anything else, right? But that has to be an army unless they're stabbing England, <laughs> I assume. Um, yeah, seems likely Army Munich would be the build to um, continue their pressure against Austria. They want a unit in Bohemia or Tyrolia. I mean, also, you want to be careful about this suddenly exploding Italian. <laughs> uh, well, explosively growing. Um, yeah, not sure how careful you need to be, but some element. Um, and Austria is notably not needing to disband, um, because Austria is still gaining Greece. Oh no, they are. They are, they are, they are. I'm, I am foolish. They lost Tunis and Trieste. Yep, so they take one off. Uh, which one is that? Probably Western Med? Fleet, Western Med. Yep. It's um, a fleet. I'm Austria. I don't need no you, fleet. <laughs> you just go down to all armies. That is fine as Austria, and it's a position you end up in a lot of the time, all in the my time. experience. <laughs> just, just every game is Austria? Yeah. God. I still um, am a little confused about this. Uh, wait. The Austrian unit voluntarily moved out of Spain, right? Which is... Um, given that retreats are in a separate phase in this one, yes. Yes, it Yeah, did. that's interesting. Um... So maybe it was agreed to hand over Spain, but I can't imagine it was agreed to give over Trieste and Tunis as well. Uh, hmm. But yeah, the the Italian does uh, support the Austrian against Greece here, which hmm, it's probably a good thing. Weakens all their opponents, but. It's probably not going to be a good thing when it comes down to, you know, you do still need an ally somewhere. Yeah, but that ally wasn't Austria. And this keeps Greece. This, this keeps Turkey out of Greece for a bit. I think this is, I think this is good. Yep. Because Turkey wants to be in Greece to get more fleets on the Ionian. Um, and that's just going to be natural tension now between Turkey and Austria. Hmm. I expect Turkey and Austria to just say, look, buddy, I'll build a fleet. I'll have four fleets and one army. Um, my army in Sevastopol is going to help you against Germany and Moscow. You're clearly pissed off at Germany now. And I'll use my fleet against Italy, and we can go back to the AT. Yep. I don't know about back to the AT, but we can we can fall <laughs> back on AT. Yeah, I would expect something like that to happen as well. Um, you don't get a turn this good without annoying people. <laughs> yeah, and the thing about that for Turkey is now the Ionian is going to have too many fleets defending it. Um, yeah. If Italy puts a fleet down in Naples, there will be three defending on defending Ionian, which really doesn't get broken from the east for a long time. I mean, it depends whether you can convince the Austrians to take off, like, uh, Ukraine instead of Western Mediterranean. Um, mm, that would absolutely make it much easier, yes. I, yeah. I hadn't considered that, but I feel like convincing Austria to disband his army instead of a fleet is going to be a tough sell. Yep. Plus, in these games, these are rulebook press, right? So there's no negotiations during retreats? Yep, no re negotiations during retreats or builds. Um, yeah, so we don't, um, you don't have that type of press like we did on WebDip. Something amusing about that, um, the, the obviously, uh, the way it's done in, in virtual face-to-face -face is all in these Discord voice channels. Uh, during phasing times, you're all supposed to come back to the central hub area, where... Like, everyone sort of just waits for the moves to go through. And then a GM will sit in your room and make sure you're not talking uh, about anything strategic or whatever while 
the uh, retreats and builds are going through, but in the game I was in for this tournament, um, <laughs> people were just continuously straying really close to that line of, you know, uh, you know, you should do this kind of thing, but not saying you should do this. They were saying, oh, that's an interesting move. <laughs> just like in real face-to-face. -face. Yep. Right, the exact same thing happens just all the time. Yeah, uh, it's amusing. All right, you want to go to retreats and builds? Yep, let's move on here to retreats, which is just Warsaw, um, retreating to Livonia. Cool. And then we've, uh, I, I guess there's not a ton to talk about with that, so... Yep. Shall we just Focus move builds. on to builds? Okay, so there's our triple build for the Italian army Naples, it's interesting. Um, I guess he wants the convoy into Albania, right? Yeah, which can be pretty easily countered if it's that clear it's what you want to do. Uh, Western Med does stay on the board. Yeah, Ukraine goes off instead. Which is really good for the German, actually. <laughs> uh, because if this Austria-Turkey is happening, Germany doesn't have to worry about it just yet. Um, with that unit coming off. I feel like... I think this tells me it's not an Austria-Turkey. They're not working together, and Turkey is going to just keep trying to fight Austria for dots. Uh. Ineffectively. Because if they are going to work together, like, that army is so much more useful than Army Romania, for example. Well, but Romania needs to cover Bul uh, Budapest here, and Galicia needs to cover Vienna. I feel like Ukraine was the only army they could uh, they could take off. But then, but Ukra Ukraine takes Moscow. Yeah, that's true, but like, like I feel like defending against this potential Italian aggression is I don't know, maybe it's more important. Yeah. I would my my instinct here was to defend minimally. Like here and this is why I wanted to disband Western Med to be clear. Because then you could use your armies to defend your home and you can still actually make growth, whereas Western Med is like for the stalemate line potential. I want to have it as opposed to like actual dots in my life, um, mm. and we know how I feel about dots. <laughs> yeah, it's important to note you do only get like two minutes to decide on your retreats and two minutes to decide on your builds. Um, so the this is right after Italy just stabbed Austria to three. Austria could just be going well. Screw you, Italy. I think I'm going to keep Western that's there fair. because that's more anti you. Uh, and um, in the north, we do see the third German fleet build. Yep, and in Kiel, which is a pretty pretty solid sign that this is time for the stab. Let us... Uh, this isn't. This is a war, right? That is a declaration of war. That is not yep. a stab. <laughs> Stabs have an element of secrecy where you don't see it coming. This is war. War has been declared... Um, well, yeah. This uh, confirms your theory that the um, move to Denmark was anti-English, right? The attempted shuffle yep. here. Um, and also it make, it means that the support into Spain of the Italian unit is, uh, well, I mean, England was probably expecting German support for Mid-Atlantic to Spain. Yes. So we're about to see a, a pretty interesting war in the north here. England doesn't have that many supply centers, and some of them are quite vulnerable, but Germany has one army on this front. Uh, not counting Denmark, which is in a kind of useless, even counterproductive position right now. Uh, although, it can move back to Kiel quite easily, so it's not that counterproductive. Um, Russia disbanding Norway instead of Finland, I think, is going to be very important here. Mm. Um, in if there was still an, ar a, an army in Norway instead of Finland, I think England is going to have a very easy time working with Russia against Germany by supporting Norway into Sweden with Skagerrak. Yep. Um, and that would be with supported by Bothnia, I assume as well, which would make it through those three units <coughs> from Germany. In Denmark, Sweden, and the Baltic would be forced to defend entirely until they want to see Sweden get disbanded. Yeah, the the issue there, of course, is that Germany just moves Moscow to Saint Petersburg, right? While you're doing that, <laughs> um, but then Germany loses their centers across the line. So 
take yep. take what you can get. Yep. Um, and gaining Sweden is always useful. Potentially Moscow can't just go into St. Petersburg because it's exposing itself to Italy, or Turkey, excuse me, something like that. Um, I think this war is going to be fairly English favored, um, especially because of that fleet from Austria in Western Med. Mm. Um, I think I think that fleet is going to be used to hurt Italy in Spain. I would expect to see Brest moving into Gascony. Interestingly, a fleet in Gascony for the second time this game. <laughs> yep. And then supporting Austria into Spain with Mid-Atlantic Ocean and Gascony. And then asking for Austrian support into Portugal. I think actually supporting Austria into Portugal and then backfilling into Spain would be uh, That makes good. more sense, yeah, because the Italian unit will still be able to cut. Um, yes, it will still be retreating into Marseille. So, yeah, the... Uh, but, yeah, that Norway unit coming off is still... It makes things a little bit more Germany-sided here. Um, yes. England still gets into the North Sea. Yep, yeah, which is huge. Uh... And which probably wouldn't... Well, no, it would have still happened if Germany had been in Denmark, but if Germany had gotten that fleet through to G Denmark, would have been a uh, a better position for Germany, I think. Significantly. Mm. And worth noting, there is no army in Munich or Berlin. The nearest army is over in Silesia. Yep. So it's not actually trivial for Germany to take Belgium. Yep. Whereas it normally is. Um, hmm. Wait, they uh, they bounced Burgundy and English Channel in Belgium last turn, right? They did. Yeah, so I assume that wasn't arranged. That was England. Well, I, I need to go back and check. Smelling something out, yeah. Maybe. Absolutely. Yeah, Germany getting an extra build makes the stab much more potent. England being down one, not building Fleet London makes the stab much better. Yep. After that bounce, I feel like you maybe can't even build Fleet Kiel and you have to wait. But maybe he was predicting England would stab him anyways. He's gone for it. Um, the Yeah, the English move into Belgium, absolutely fantastic, and maybe saved this game for the English player, then certainly turned it around, right? This war, absolutely. Uh, that one extra fleet is going to very likely be the difference. <laughs> uh... So, uh, much else to talk about here. We we do have the Italian builds in the middle. That Naples unit probably going to be convoyed over to Albania. Venice is interesting because it could be a problem for the German. Uh, although I would expect it, to see it could be it could be moving into Munich. Um, Twenty bucks says it's not. I would expect to see Italy and Germany continue to work together here because they kind of don't have a ton to gain by attacking each other. They've both got um, stronger enemies on the other side of them, right? I agree. Um, but yeah. Uh, and the other build, that fleet Smyrna. I, I mean, it, it makes sense, but this is a bit too fleet heavy, in my opinion, of a Turkish build. Um... How are you going to get those centers? Certainly doesn't feel optimal. Greece is still a, a center to capture, and having four fleets when Italy only has three is always nice. Yeah. So there's no naval superiority. Um, you can potentially break Ionian. I, I really like the fleet Smyrna. I thought it was very clear. Mm. I'm just thinking four fleets feels a bit wrong, but I can see... I agree. I think I think the tactics of getting the builds immediately outweigh the strategic implications of being fleet heavy. Furthermore, if you're planning on doing the Austria Turkey alliance, you want to be very fleet heavy. That's so, true. Uh, so I, I think this makes sense. Shall we move on to the spring? Let's look at some moves. Yep. Okay, that move uh, fleet in Gascony, as you predicted. Um, Austria getting into Spain, as you predicted, yeah, but being Germany supported by Germany. Germany. 
<laughs> German support is not quite what I expected. <laughs> um, um, cool. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Italy attempting to go for the convoy into Albania, but unsupported, which, I mean, it wouldn't have worked even if it was supported, but you'd think, you know, the, yeah. that's a bit of a useless move that way. Um... Man, well, where else are we looking here? So, Germany ended up in Ukraine. They did? Vacating Warsaw to do it. Um, Silesia is moving west into Munich, trying to get into a potential spot. And Germany got supported into Norway by Russia. And Russia takes Sweden behind them. Hmm. Yeah. England is still in Skagerrak, but the fleet in the Baltic made it into Denmark. Yep. This seems fantastic for Germany. And Kiel got into Holland. Like, this this was a huge win for Germany. Um, like, a, a diplomatic victory anyway, getting... Uh, How do you, yeah, getting Russia to support them in the Norway is just... It's a game changer. Yep. Uh, and, I mean, clearly they've got an Austria on side to some degree. Um... I, yeah, that's huge. Uh, England still has a pretty good position, but it's not like game winning. Not nearly as good, right? Yeah. You would ex because England ended up in in Belgium and North Sea. You would expect Holland to be a very likely capture, but because Denmark made it back to Kiel and Kiel is still in, still in Holland, that's actually very safe. Um. The German army in Burgundy is better than the French army in Paris. Um, like Belgium is is that there's two there are two on Belgium two German armies on Belgium, so it's it's worth considering um, how do you defend that if you if you even do, and that German fleet in Norway can quickly become a rogue fleet, just get into Norwegian Sea and be be impossible to answer. Yep. And uh, Russia doesn't really have a reason to turn on Germany here, right? Yeah, and if Austria is in Western Med, support holding... Holy smokes! This is just okay. huge. Do we think that Italy is going to end up on England's side? I think that's fairly likely, given that uh, Italy has serious incentive to get into Spain here. And like you would think that England would go... If Italy came to him and said, okay, I want to be anti-German, England would just go, yes, yes, please, please, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, so... Because suddenly that Italian army in Tyrolia would be more useful elsewhere. Mm. Yeah, Italy is going to have serious problems, though. They've, they're they going to lose Trieste here, right? Um. Um, potentially. If they lose Trieste, they take Vienna. Yes, they do. That's true. Well, or sorry, sorry. Uh, if 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 Austria guarantees the capture of Trieste, they lose Vienna. But if Italy goes for Vienna and Austria guesses they do, then Austria can actually snag Trieste cheaply. Yep. And keep Vienna. That's um, true. So that's that's neat. Um, I think the the potentially bigger deal is that Ionian is falling. Um, Turkey got Greece and Eastern Med, so. Unless Austria taps Greece, which seems unlikely. Yeah. So, Italy is in a tough spot here, and this is the problem with uh, getting a huge turn that irritates everyone, right? <laughs> it might have been wiser to play it slower, but it, it still could work out. Potentially not taking Trieste or something. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, this this Russian two units in the north is such a game changer. Yep, I I mean all of this like this entire thing, England's strategy here because they're so fleet heavy has to be okay. You know, grab those first few centers, start building armies, then I can push in and grab the other centers, right? But it all relies on being able to take those first few. And everything, everything has been reliant on this getting the Russian on side at the top. Because all of these moves into Denmark, into Kiel, into Holland, that was all made possible by the fact they didn't need to defend Sweden. 
and with the Russian fleet there now on their side, that's something they can use to push the English player out of Skagarak. It's huge. I guess that game is called Diplomacy for a reason, eh? Yep. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's um, huge, and like also this is a non-time limited game, so you think it probably is going to come down to talk of of who throws to who at the very end. Um, Germany is already making a huge progress with that, <laughs> uh, showing off their diplomatic skill here. Um, we, we'll see how that comes out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I can't say enough good things about that move to Norway. That's uh, yeah, insanely good. Uh, it's a real game changer. Yep. Uh, is there anything else we want to talk about here? That's not for me. Yeah, I think we're good to move on then. Let's go through to the fall. Okay, um, Ionian's fallen down there, which you predicted. Uh, Italy frantically trying to get the Austrian back on side, it looks like. And actually supporting the, trying to support the Austrian out of Spain into Mid-Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> the Austrian just goes, nope, and everyone around the Austrian goes, okay, we're support holding you. Screw the Italian. Um, this is... Uh, Interesting, Germany tries to support the Austrian into Romania as well, but that doesn't uh, go because the Austrian decides to go to Vienna instead, which is the obvious move. Looks like this AT is solidifying. And I believe Russia was stabbed by Germany here in a very sneaky way. Um, I believe the negotiations between Russia and Germany indicated that Germany would attack Skagrak and force the disband of the fleet in Skagrak from Norway, which would leave Russia with a build. But due to the way these tactics worked out, um, I believe Germany um, supported Holland into North Sea instead. Yep. So Germany actually is still even with Russia here. But if my reading is correct... Um, Skagerrak supported North Sea into Denmark, which is going to be successful. Yep. yep. And Holland makes it into North Sea. Kiel bounces Belgium out of Holland. Um, so that's useful. And Munich ends up in Ruhr to make taking Belgium a cinch next year. But Germany, I believe, still has to disband something. Oh... Uh... I need to count sensors, but uh, yeah, that looks... Uh, wait, they go plus Norway, minus Sweden. Minus Denmark. Minus Denmark, indeed, yes. So they do need to take something off. It has to be one of the armies around, maybe? No, they can't take Kiel off because they just lost Denmark. And they just stabbed the Russians, so now these units are not going to be friendly, presumably. Um... But they are in North Sea. That might have been worth it. <laughs> North Sea is pretty important. Uh, England gets a build. Because of Denmark. Yeah. Which, again, is huge. Um, like, that build, uh, it doesn't completely negate the strength that uh, Fleet North Sea has, but it does to some degree. Like... Not entirely. Um, Fleet North Sea is still very likely to end up in one of the French home centers next year. The English ones, yeah. London or Edinburgh. The, um, yeah, the English home centers. Not the <laughs> but yeah. Um, Although, English Channel to Brest wouldn't be the craziest thing. It would be pretty bad, though. English Channel hmm. to Brest? There isn't an... North Sea oh, English mean Channel North... to Brest. Yeah, yeah, okay. Gotcha. But... Uh... Yeah? That seems worse. Hmm. I mean, if you can manage to pull off some kind of convoy into the English homeland, that's what you always want to be going for, right? But I don't know that, uh, that you can hold North Sea long enough for that to happen. Um, it's also difficult because there's no army adjacent yeah. bordering North Sea. Yep, they'd need to push something into Holland, which 
Uh, Germany clearly is going to do, I think, but um, not, uh, not yet. We might just go straight for Belgium, but yeah, this the convoy into the homeland is not happening this, this year, and if the Russian is actually pissed at the German, um, this whole position for, for Germany in the north will change. Mm. If Sweden changes from a friendly to hostile fleet, it is r remarkably different. Yep. Although I suppose mm. losing Denmark makes it a little bit less impactful, but it's still pretty impactful. So do you think this um, stab on the... Uh, well, given this support didn't actually help get into North Sea, it would have gotten in anyway. Do you think this stab on against the Russian was a good thing? It does mean the Russian doesn't build. It also means that the German doesn't disband too, which they would have done if they'd gone through with this. I, I absolutely agree. I think this was a great decision from Germany. Yeah, but it does turn those two units against them, most likely. So. Yeah, but it's... I think they were going to go against Germany next year, even if Germany doesn't... Even if Germany does vacate Norway, mm. I think... Sweden and St. Petersburg and Norway. So the units, the units would be in Norway, Sweden, and St. Pete. I think they are likely to go after Denmark and or Moscow. Um, anyways, so I don't think it actually. It means now there's only two units attacking me instead of three. Yep. Um, that makes sense. With an, with an empty St. Petersburg, as opposed to St. Petersburg having a unit in it, I think this is a much better position for Russia. Um, so, the we, we've talked about the North a fair bit here. Something to mention as well, this, this slowly sneaking up Turkish threat um, just gained another supply center here and all of the Austrian units moving away from them. That could be something that emerges quite strong in the end game. Absolutely. Um, not I'll, the way Austria chose to capture Trieste was not the most pro Turkey, but this gives Austria a build, so it makes sense, of course. Yeah. Um, the yeah, does it because they lose Greece. Um, oh, they gained Spain. I didn't. Spain, right? Yeah, I didn't notice they were gaining Spain. Um. Yeah, and the Austrian having that many armies might counterbalance the Turk in a sense. Um, yeah, it's difficult for Turkey to take any centers from Austria quickly. Yeah, the, the only center is Romania, and that's that's only one dot. The important thing is that this isn't a time limited game, so Turkey could technically just slow play it and and bring fleets around Italy and try and take that peninsula, um, which will take forever, but it's possible. <laughs> Yeah, and from there, I'm not sure where they go. Does Turkey then break through Iberia for their solo potential, or do they just build a bunch of armies and go for the stab? I, f I feel like they build armies, right? Yeah, I'm used to seeing them in the AT build armies and stab, but that's why the AT never works. So. Yep. <laughs> Italy um, is down too, right? They lost uh, Spain here, they lost Trieste, yep. Managed to hold on to everything else, but it's that uh, good so position. So much for that plus three. It's a very short-lived one. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, all right. Um, shall we all right, move? Let's look at our retreats and builds. On to, and then we will do power rankings again. Here, this is the retreats. Um, Ionian Sea goes to Tunis. Makes sense. Uh, Denmark goes to Baltic. Also, like makes sense. Was. The only option apart from Heligoland. Maybe Heligoland would have been... Eh, Heligoland is kind of giving up on Scandinavia, right? Which... It's probably better just to let North Sea be forced um, and concentrate on, on making sure you keep Norway. Um, because if North Sea is forced, you retreat to somewhere that's great anyway. <laughs> Yep, North Sea will retreat to a dot. Yep. Uh, which dot is unclear? Uh, yeah, or to English Channel, which is also great. <laughs> um, so. I would be surprised if Germany retreats into English Channel. Yeah. Uh, partially because I expect Mid Atlantic Ocean to move to English Channel. Um, after seeing the disbands, with Portugal going off the board 
and Western Med going off the board oh, as well. Oh, I haven't looked at that yet. Okay, I've moved oh. to that. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, yes, I would, uh, given this position, I would expect Med Atlantic Ocean to go to the English Channel. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I went to look at the builds. No, um, that's all good. Uh, so, is Turkey already dropping a fleet down here? Um, uh, army down, yeah. Sorry, yeah army <laughs> uh it could be an attempt to convoy into apulia um seems plausible but it could it's... also be convoyed into bulgaria i would assume it's the convoy to apulia yeah but it's also a nice excuse to get an army on the board um because Absolutely. having armies is good if you want to stab later on uh and it's just like that german problem earlier if you don't build them now when are you going to build them because you have to have a big turn and build them all at once to stab the Austrian. Um, so, England builds fleet Edinburgh. It makes sense because uh, Mid-Atlantic Ocean can cover the uh, the London side of things. Um, what else have we got? Army Budapest, that was the only option. Uh, fleet West Med and Army Piedmont coming off. That makes sense from a perspective of it's defending what you can, right? Yep. Um, Hold what you can. Yep. Leave all the rest. Uh, should we do power rankings? They changed? <laughs> well, France, goodbye. Well, yeah, but last place and gone are basically the same thing, right? Yeah, so... Russia very clearly in last now. Um, the well, we had the Austrian above the Italian. That's definitely true now, all right. I agree. Yep. Uh, and then it's Turkey, England, Germany, was what we had. I could see Turkey have supplanted England, but I still think it's pretty close. Mm. I, I'd say Turkey is probably in better position, but Turkey's still gonna have a tough time growing, and there's still five Austrian armies that we don't know what they're doing. So I would I'd leave it. I would just say let's let's keep it unchanged. Maybe Turkey's gotten better, but that's fair. Um, you think that Germany has the advantage in this war then, even if uh, Russia is against them now? I think it's too unclear. Mm. Um, and like Germany is more extended. Um. Which I think is useful, because Germany is going to have an easier time working with Austria. That's true. Um, they're also going to have a harder time defending themselves if Austria chooses not to work with them. It comes down That's to true. diplomacy, I guess. Yeah, but we've seen that the Austrian hasn't had much interest in attacking the German before. Yep. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Spain never takes Portugal. Um... <laughs> I think it should take Portugal, but I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't. Mm. And, like, what's Ukraine going to do? Is Ukraine going to support Austria into Armenia and then support Austria against the Turk? Plausible. Is Austria going to support Germany against the Turk? Because that would be huge growth potential. Germany can still is, is still adjacent to St. Petersburg, which can be a, an extra build at some point in the future if the tactics work out such that Moscow is not needed. Um, and I don't see how England is going to gain. I don't see what centers England can grow. I think the North Sea is too potent against England. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I... Yeah, I can't give the advantage to England in this war either. Um, just because of that North Sea fleet, that's that's so painful. <laughs> Uh, they do have a good enough position that I think they definitely have a shot in this war, but yeah, too close to call. Um, yeah, and, that, and that's why I say I give the um the edge to Germany with the units in Moscow and Ukraine. Yep. When all of England's units are used in this war, and yet Germany is still holding. It's possible that Germany goes really badly, right? When Portugal, if Portugal gets lost. Um, and Germany doesn't gain a dot. Germany losing a unit would be pretty impactful here, but like I think Belgium is going to fall, for example. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, London 
No, London probably isn't going to fall because they'll get units in North and English Channel, right? Yep. I mean, there might be something where, like, there might be some nonsense going on, but we'll, we'll see. Alright, uh, shall we move to the next phase? Let's do it. Alright, spring 1907. Uh, we do see Germany making an attempt for the English Channel, or uh, going to bounce specifically the English uh, Channel, which is successful. It bounces. Um, Germany got supported into Skagerrak um, by the Russian. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't force a disband of the Skagerrak, but it happened simultaneously as Denmark is forced to retreat. Yep. Uh, Skagerrak got into the North Sea, so England is fine in that respect. Uh, Denmark can go to Heligoland. Yes, but North Sea can retreat now to London, and there is only North Sea adjacent to London. Yep. Belgium was lost as well, so England is currently down three centers in the spring. Yep. Um, plus Spain, um, and plus... Holland, so net down one. Is it plus Spain, though? Because uh, Italy just moved into the Gulf of Leon and Western Mediterranean. Oh, oh, I'm saying I'm saying just in the spring. My point is that Spain and Holland are both likely lost in the fall. Right, yes. So they will not... Um, they, will, they don't count the same way that the German do. Yep. Um, so... Yikes. That's painful for England and amazing for Germany. Um, plus Denmark, plus London, minus Norway, most likely. I don't... Although, there's no unit adjacent to St. Petersburg except Norway, so Germany could just take a shot at St. Petersburg and, you know, get the guess right, or not take a shot at St. Petersburg, get the guess right, and have them walk back out of Norway again. Um, yeah, the thing about Norway is Sweden would likely move to Norway if Norway moved to St. Pete. Not guaranteed, though. It's possible Russia... Yeah, the awkward thing is because Russia only has one home center, there's not much advantage to getting two builds. Yep. Um. Hmm. Yeah. To, um, the other thing to mention... Not on the other side of the board, we see a huge stab against uh, Turkey, I think. Right? Yeah. I think that army build freaked out the Austrian. Mm. Yep. And, the, like, probably rightly so, given it's not being convoyed here. Um, the Turk attempts to convoy the Austrian unit from Albania to Apulia instead. I imagine Austria just went, okay, you've got an extra army here, you're trying to get me to move one army out. Yeah, yeah you're setting up for a stab on you, right? <laughs> um, so it looks like Sevastopol is going to fall. Yeah, to the Austrian? Or to the German? Like Unclear to whom, but I would expect them to work together on it and figure it out. I would expect the Austrian to, like, not support the German in right now, given how strong the German is in the north. If Austria wants a chance of winning, they need to make sure that they get the growth. Uh, That's true. They're still currently in Bulgaria with two units adjacent, mm. um, whereas Turkey has four units adjacent, so Turkey will, can likely recapture Bulgaria. Yeah, maybe it was better for the Austrian just to keep going against the uh, the Italian here, especially given that um, they would have had Venice guaranteed if they had bounced that move to Apulia. Uh, now they don't. Yes. Um, yeah. Is, is there a ton else to talk about here? Um, I think it's more interesting to note the Italian moved into Gulf of Leon and Western Med. Yep. Abandoning Tyrrhenian and Tunis, looking like Italy thinks that their best chance for survival is in Iberia. Yep. And they're going to capture Spain, which is bad news for England. Yep, and uh, good news for Austria. It's possible the Austrian supports hold um, the English in Spain. That's that's not impossible. Yeah, they would need Mid-Atlantic Ocean to... 
because of the Marseille units in Gascony, obviously the English fleet being on the north coast means it wouldn't be able to retreat to Marseille, so there's no need to cover that. Except there is an English unit in Burgundy right now, so maybe there is a reason to cover Marseille. I think Marseille. it's likely the English unit in Burgundy is going to be doing something with Munich or Burgundy or Belgium or Ruhr instead of instead of Marseille. You would expect so. Um, so I think I think that it going into Marseille would be highly unexpected. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's technically very good news for the Turk, except not because Austria just turned around and attacked them. Um, it's still probably pretty good news for the Turk. Being able to walk into Tunis is, is good news. Yep, it is. Or, or the Tyrrhenian Sea, even. Um, get that position. Yeah, I think Adriatic Sea would be the priority in this particular situation. Yeah, because it, well, especially considering Austria is against them now, that's, uh... That's very important. Um, but not having armies is going to cost them, because, like, how do you take anything off the Austrian with two armies? <laughs> well, Bulgaria and Greece are still are still important centers, and Romania is potent. Yeah, I, I wouldn't count taking Bulgaria off the Austrian as taking it off the Austrian, because the Austrian doesn't own it yet. <laughs> sure, uh, um, I agree, I agree. But it's, um, Romania is definitely. I think this is more of a unit number thing. Like Austria just has enough units to make it hard to capture anything from them, um, yep. which just means you just can't. Yeah, I want to see the next moves. Okay, let's move ahead to the uh, summer. <laughs> uh, there goes the retreat into London, the retreat into Hel Heligoland Bight, as we expected. Um, nothing else, so let's move ahead to fall 1907. Uh, Austria did support hold the English unit. They're like, no, Italy, you're not taking this uh, this Spain center. It's, it's not yours. Uh, but Italy does make up for it by walking into Brest, which was something I didn't notice they could do. <laughs> yeah, Brest or Paris are both exposed, um, but Spain is, I think, way more important. Yep. So this seems this seems fine for England. Okay. Um, for Turkey, they let Germany into Sevastopol, and they are going to, in fact, take Romania. Interesting. Um, I assume that's on the basis that Germany only has two units on this front. They have a war going on on the other side. If there's a build, it's not going to be to defend the Russian front, and therefore... You know, the Turk can throw units there later on and take it. Um, yeah, I think Austria is a bigger deal. Yep. Uh, they they get something more by pushing into Romania here. Italy chose not to defend Venice. Yeah, strange one. Maybe they got Moved taught. Venice to Piedmont. Jeez. I wonder if, uh, like, Austria told the Italian, oh, hey, I'm supporting you into Spain, maybe they haven't forgiven them for the move into Trieste and, and Tunis earlier, and told them, oh, I'm supporting you into Spain, I'm I'm not attacking Venice. Um, Austria is off one. As in... There's, there's this bending one. They really? lost Spain. Oh, no, they gained Portugal. Yeah, they did. Minus Spain, plus Portugal... Minus Rome plus Venice. Okay. So they're breaking. They're, they're even. Yep. Uh, Italy is plus Brest minus Venice. Italy's even. Turkey is minus Sev plus Rome. Turkey's even. Minus Bull. Plus Bull. They got Bull back. Oh, they did get Bull back. Okay. I'm misreading this board. Germany is plus Sev minus Norway. Uh, minus Portugal. Plus London. Uh, plus Belgium. Yeah, plus Belgium, plus London, For minus zero. Holland. <laughs> plus London, plus one, minus Holland, zero, plus Denmark. So plus one. <laughs> plus one. That's a whole lot of SCs changing for plus one. <laughs> wow. England is plus Spain, minus Belgium. Plus Holland, minus London, minus Denmark. Minus Brest. Um, minus Brest. Wow. 
That's a lot of is that minuses, down right? Two? I think it's down or is two. That down, is that down... How many have they got left? One, two, three, four, five. Um, One, two, three, four. I only count four. Uh, they've got Edinburgh, Liverpool, Holland, Paris, Spain. Holland is still theirs. That's true. That's true. Right. Holland is still theirs. Um, that is yeah. Paris, no, that is five. Spain, Liverpool, Edinburgh, Holland is five. Yep. Cool. So they. Um, and Russia is plus one. Much more simply. Yep. Oh, uh, and that goes in St. Petersburg. I wonder if Russia uses it against the Excuse Germans. Excuse me, I'm, I'm, com I think I'm wrong. Russia supported England into oh, Denmark. They did. I completely missed that that move was successful. It's, Excuse uh... me. Yeah. So North Sea is in Denmark, meaning Denmark is not held. So Germany is actually even, <laughs> and England is off one. Yep. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, minus one unit for England. Um, that's an interesting move by the Russian. I guess they haven't forgiven the German for uh, for not getting out of Norway earlier, or they're just trying to create chaos to let themselves get back on the board, uh, which is... Sure. Yeah, very fair. Um, as long as you still have a shot, keep fighting. <laughs> uh... But yeah, a whole lot of things changing hands here for very little um, gains or losses from anyone. <laughs> yeah. Like, again, I think net, it's England is disbanding something, Austria is building something because of the, the but neutral units. He's only building something because he disbanded a unit. Yep. And Russia is building something. Yep. That's that's the net. That's it. <laughs> so net England is losing is has one fewer unit than he did last year, and, and Russia has one more. Cool, good for Russia. Yeah. All right. Um, well, shall we move on to the winter here, or is there more to talk about? Uh, we I guess we could talk about this mess in Heligoland. Bite to Holland. Holland to Kiel. I do not understand why that was ordered. Um. I I would have expected a supported move into Kiel there, so maybe it was a misorder. Um So let's see. So you need to you need to cut Kiel if you're going after Denmark. Yeah. But there's no reason to do one move there and then a backfill, right? Um if Kiel was doing was having an aneurysm, you might have wanted Kiel to backfill Holland in case you walk into both, but that doesn't make much sense. Mm. Yeah, I would have. Ex I feel like supporting something into Kiel would have been better, but still. Oh, if Holland had supported Helgoland into Kiel, this would have been punishing. Yep. Uh, yeah, um, I don't see why they didn't. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. yeah, that seems like it would have been a better sequence. I assume it was a misorder. That's, uh... Do you know what interface they were playing on? They were playing on Backstabber. Um, so... Do you know how easy it is to make a mistake like that? It's, uh... I mean... You have to you have to press S or click the support button in order to order a support. So ordering a, a move instead of a support isn't that easy to do. Uh, but I guess we won't know here. It would have been if England had ordered um, Heligoland Bite to Kiel, then England would have been net zero and Germany would have been minus one, which I think makes a huge difference, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Moscow would have, like, something in the east would have had to go, or one of these important fleets would have had to go. Yeah. Um, but, worth noting, Russia gets a build, and so if that build is pro-English, it's kind of okay. Yeah. Um, if that build is anti-English, it's kind of not. So, it's, um, it's unclear. Okay, well, let's have Shall a we see? look. Yep, uh, retreat here. Germany goes into the Baltic. Um, they could have taken that off and rebuilt at home, but I guess they don't think they but need the army. this is much better. This is, this is way better. It, keeping those fleets alive. Uh, and then, uh, Austria also retreats into Budapest, but, yep, that was 
kind of the only good option on that front. Uh, so... Yeah, off the board of Rebuild and Budapest, same diff. Yeah, actually, cool. I, I would have done that because it gives more options, but then you can't negotiate during this phase, so it's kind of like, eh. it's, it's whatever, right? You're going to build it in Budapest, it's fine. Yep. Okay, so here, builds. Um, fleet Trieste. Interesting. Cool, I suppose there's a fleet in Adriatic, so... Yep, uh, but it can't do very much because there's a fleet in Adriatic, right? It can move into the Adriatic a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just tap that. Um, I don't think that does much. Seems Considering worthless. if Adriatic is attacking something, it's probably attacking Trieste. Uh, but I guess we'll see. Um... England takes off uh, Denmark, and R Russia builds fleet north coast of St. Petersburg. Ouch, that's bad for England. Um, I think England was hoping for Army St. Pete, looking for after sure. Moscow, or fleet south coast St. Pete, which still have been pretty good for England, but this is... Um, I feel like there's about to be German army in Denmark, or German fleet in Denmark, and Skagerrak, and a Russian fleet in Norway, and Sweden. Yep. And that fleet in London is going to be going to be held to answer. I think London is going to move to Wales this turn to take Liverpool, yep. is my expectation. You can't do a ton about that except move Mid-Atlantic Ocean back or move Edinburgh to Clyde, both of which feel really bad, because if you're moving Mid-Atlantic Ocean back, you want it in English Channel, not in Irish Sea or, or North Atlantic. North Atlantic is okay, but it's not great. Um, and yeah, you, you're probably giving up Spain if you do that. Uh, eh, it depends whether Austria continues helping you or not. And what um, Brest does, because if Brest moves back to Gascony, then yes, you're losing Spain. Yep. Um, so, shall we move on here? Is the Denmark coming off? That seems... Is that the best option? It's probably the most likely thing to be forced disbanded, right? Um, yeah. So y I would have been tempted to pop Burgundy, uh, because I like popping armies, but then I suppose Paris is guaranteed to fall, so Burgundy is kind of like a free unit. Yeah. So Burgundy is probably not the best choice. I, I, all of the fleets for England were so critical here. Uh, it's tough. Yeah, I think England is just really on the back foot now. Um Sure, let's uh, move ahead to the spring. Let's do it. Okay. Um, it, uh, okay, so England decides not to protect Spain, but it doesn't matter because uh, Italy tries to move to North Africa instead, and England bounces that. And Austria doesn't bother support holding England anymore, but that doesn't matter because England is going to Mid-Atlantic as well. Um, I... Wonder if that was an arranged bounce and an attempt to get the English fleet into position to take Tunis. But it's clearly something the Italian predicted if that was the case. Um, yeah. More important to note in the south, uh, Turkey avoiding the Ionian Sea and just pulling the fleets up into Albania and Greece. Err. Uh, very anti-Austrian, and the successfully predicting the move to Armenia and countering it is also huge. Um, although there wasn't a huge amount else for that fleet to do. Yeah, but Germany clearly expected to get in, else Germany would have moved to Ukraine, I believe. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I... So, somehow, it, um, he did it. Notably, London moved to English Channel instead of Wales. Um, yeah. so I suppose this German doesn't share my fascination with dots. <laughs> I wonder if it was because, um, they expected Mid-Atlantic Ocean to go to English Channel here and just wanted to bounce it out and hold London again. Um. I believe it. Um, incidentally, they can still hold London. Yep. If yep. they move back. And the only unit that could take London would be North Sea, which feels bad to have your unit North Sea just get bounced. And England also had simply lost Holland, um, and it was and now there's units in Belgium and Holland, so yeah, I mean, England is just getting crushed. 
Portsen, so now very uh, courageous play by the German here, leaving Munich completely undefended while the England is in Burgundy. But I guess they predicted that uh, England would protect Paris. Because um, Brest is kind of only going to Paris, right? So. Yep. Not only did they, not only did the German not uh, defend Munich, they actually actively moved Ruhr away from it, which means that if England had gone into Munich, they would not have been dislodgeable, except with Austrian assistance, um, which would have been interesting. One of them in each of the other's home centers. <laughs> being very difficult to answer. The difference being Germany is getting built, mm. um, and England is not. Yep. And builds make defending your home a lot easier. <laughs> That's true. Although you get less of them if you don't have uh, your home centers. Um, it's true, but so Germany would only need one build to get Munich back. Russia uh, supporting the German into Denmark with the, that's a very strong attack into Denmark there. Uh, potentially needlessly strong given that there was only one unit adjacent to it but hey uh, the this way even if Russia decided to help England Germany would still have captured Denmark yep that's true and the uh, the fleet in the north coast of St. Petersburg is just sitting there at the moment which it didn't need to do. It could have swapped positions out with uh, Norway. Maybe Russia is just content with the three and uh, ending the game on the three. Which is a decent spot for them, um, If again, considering that they were looking really, really terrible earlier <laughs> in terms of their, their uh, survival chances. Err... Uh, Right, so what else have we got to look at here? England is in North Sea, um, but it's likely not going to hold it considering Skagerrak, uh, Denmark, and English Channel are all adjacent. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, we swing around to the south side of the board and um, we've already taken a look at the move into Armenia. Uh, Austria putting everything into holding Venice, um, which... Yeah, that's fine. God, he got punished. They're not making any progress <laughs> anywhere. Yeah, and Turkey made it into Albania. Yep. Um, and because Italy is now in, for, has moved from Puglia to Rome, Italy can now be attacking Venice with strength two, with impunity, essentially. Um, so Austria is eventually going to crumble. Yep. Uh, which is good news for the Turk. <laughs> um, this... Uh... The Turk could be our dark horse here. Um, they are already on six, which isn't very many. But, wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't such a dark horse, right? We've had Turkey pretty high in the power rankings for a while, but yeah, okay. So it's kind of a a lightish colored horse that's slightly more gray than the other two. <laughs> yeah, I mean this one is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Um. So I think we're about done talking about this. I agree. Let's go on to the next um, next phase. Full phase here. Uh, Germany lets Turkey move back into arm, which is a good good idea on uh, Germany's part. It means that that Black Sea fleet isn't there anymore. Yep. Uh, and Turkey gets into Serbia but loses Romania. <laughs> uh, oh, and gets into Trieste. That's much bigger. And Austria loses Venice as well. Ouch. And Austria Portugal. Austria went from Munich instead. Ooh. I see. Austria realized their position was untenable and looked to gain a build from Germany, who is building a ton. But Germany realized, hey, Kiel doesn't actually need to do anything right now. Um, basically, it kind of... it. There was potential for France... No, because Burgundy was still still tapped out. So no, yeah, Kiel was an extra unit, so he could um, cover Munich even. And so Germany is just plus three. Because Germany gained Sweden. Yep, uh, we should talk about that in a second. But the um, like the Austrian going down this many centers is huge. <laughs> well, it's just like, ouch. Although it doesn't actually increase the Turkish chances that much, I think, because it just boosted the Italian a ton as well, getting Venice back. Um, man, 
but yeah, in the north we see England attacking Norway, which allows Germany to take Sweden. I guess England just said, okay, Russia, if you're going to screw with me like this, I'll just make my endgame goal to eliminate you. And, and England doesn't even get Norway, right? Yep, it was a purely screw you move. Uh, and, like, England could have gone after Denmark still. And given that Kiel was tapping Munich, it would have actually recaptured Denmark. <laughs> yep. Although I imagine the English didn't know that. Um, I assume England was attacking Norway, expecting Russia, expecting Germany to be attacking Russia and Sweden. Yep, uh, but they they didn't know that Kiel was uh, bouncing in Munich. Sure. We, but yeah, it it certainly looks like England has just said, okay, well, Germany, you can get the first place. I'm just gonna screw Russia here. Um, yeah, that's what it feels like. Yep. It might not. It might not be done yet, um, because if Austria and Turkey can put aside their differences, I believe they can still catch um, Germany. Um, because they can. Maybe not catch. Yeah, they probably can't catch. They could stop the solo, but. Um, I think this isn't it, about solos. It depends a lot on whether England actively throws to to Germany or just like passively says, "I'm not going to attack you anymore, but I'm still going to defend my supply centers," um, which is obviously worse for the German, because uh, I think Austria Turkey can knock the German out of these three eastern supply centers, um, and. I mean, e even if Italy, Turkey get on the same page and just wipe Austria quickly, they can do the same thing. But yeah, then they'd be sharing one side of the board between two people, and the other side would be majority one person, so... Yeah. Yep. How, how often do you see a board leader Germany without any centres in France, or... Th uh, well, at the moment they have no centres in Scandinavia, they're about to get two, but... <laughs> That's um, that's an interesting one. Uh, yeah. What else do we have to talk about? Just the Austrian getting decimated. Um, England decides to to take Marseille. Yeah, but trading Marseille for Paris, whatever. Yeah, it's probably fine. Uh. The Italian's going to find it hard to hold those centers if the German just comes after him. Um, yeah. Maybe England can convince Italy to move to Picardy while England moves into Burgundy and they work together on Belgium or something, but England's still disbanding, right? Yeah. So, uh, how many centers does England, England lose? Can't do anything? They, they have uh, only five one. left. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Um... I'm like Austria, who's off three, right? Yeah. <laughs> Poor Austria. Yeah. Ouch. It's like the the story of that side of the board has been explosive growth followed by explosive downfall. Right? <laughs> Except I don't know that the Austrian even got explosive growth here. They got Venice. Um, and Portugal, right? Slowly. Yeah. But they lost Spain getting Portugal, so it's kind of like... Meh. Um, but yeah. Uh, this is painful for the Austrian. We technically, after this phase, we're doing power rankings, but I don't think there's a huge amount of uh, controversy um, on those. I mean, Turkey is clearly ahead of England now, but yeah. other than that, honestly, maybe Italy's ahead of England. Yes, I would actually say so, uh, because Italy, Turkey kind of have to work together here if they're going to contest the German, and that means they have to come to terms that benefit both of them, right? Yeah, it's just awkward that Turkey's got three fleets in the med already. Yep. Makes it difficult to um to hit the mainland. It does. And like taking apart Austria at all on that Vienna Budapest Romania line, especially if uh Germany just decides to prop Austria up with the new builds, that could be quite difficult. Yep. Um uh, maybe Austria decides to go after Germany and Russia, right? Warsaw and Moscow. But you you do have to consider that at this point in the game, Austria probably isn't going to win. So he's thinking, who hasn't harmed me, and that's probably Germany, right? It's good to see that. Mm. But 
yeah, uh, shall we move ahead to the retreats here? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Venice comes off, Serbia comes off, uh, Portugal obviously know where to retreat to, Sweden goes to the Gulf of Bothnia, which gives uh, Russia a choice of what to disband. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... Didn't... Did did the unit going into Sweden come from Skagerrak? I think it did, right? Yes, it did. So there was the option to retreat to Baltic there, but uh, Russia doesn't take it. Oh, it's to Finland, it's not to Bothnia. Okay, that's very pro-German. Cool. Uh, so I think we're seeing some agreement on the northern side of the board that Germany should win the game, right? <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah. Certainly seems like England and Russia are not particularly fighting back. Yep. Um, and in the south, uh, Austria is just taking off units so they can build another one where they want to, right? Um, uh, I don't think they're building. I think they are, because they only have two units on the board and they have three centers. Uh, Romania, Budapest, Vienna. Uh, that indicates like they're building. Yep, something is gonna be. <laughs> how yep, how often are. do you go minus three and still build? Wow. Uh. <laughs> sure. All right. So there's a build from Turkey, a build from Austria. Germany builds two. England's off one. Yeah. Um. Does uh, Italy gain or not? I think Italy gains. I think one. Italy builds. I yep. think Italy builds. Yeah. Uh. Plus. Um, Plus Venice, yeah. Yep. Gonna be interesting to see if that's Fleet Naples here, just to... Because I, I feel like it has to be an army if they want to contest uh, Germany, but army feels bad when you've got so many Turkish fleets hanging around. Yeah, and we've already got army Rome. Yeah. So it, it's really hard to get that out of your homeland. Um, well, let's move ahead to builds and see where they... You know, where it happens. It was a fleet, Naples... So, uh, Austria builds his uh, army Budapest. It's army Smyrna from the Turk, which makes sense. Uh, Going to be moved up to Armenia and then presumably attack Sevastopol. Um, and uh, UK takes Heligoland bite off the board. It's more pro-Germany. And Finland is off, uh, which is pro-Germany. So, <laughs> yeah. Germany okay. very much in the power position here, um, and I think I we can safely say they're staying at the top of our power rankings, yes. Yeah, and Turkey second, and then Italy's third, and then England is fourth, and then Austria's fifth, and then Russia is sixth. Yep, uh, I... Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say maybe those last two can be discussed, but no, I think I agree with you, uh, considering the German... We'll probably prop up the Austrian, and yeah, Russia is is now being attacked by an English-German alliance. Um, yeah, Austria has two home centers. Russia has one. <laughs> All comes down to dots. All it, look. I think if you were to track our power rankings throughout the game, you would see that they line up ninety percent of the time with <laughs> the dots. Yeah, but they they give us a good reason to have a, a 4x3 map, right? Well, a square map. <laughs> we need something on the right-hand side. Um, yeah. But yes, uh, it's it probably does line up to dots a lot of the time. There are times where position is more important than dots, although you might not agree on that. <laughs> there there are times. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree. There are times where, where position matters more than dots. Like, there are times where I'd rather be a 3-center Turkey than a 4-center Austria. I, I totally agree with that, um, yep. but but like, how many times would I rather be a five center turkey than a four center turkey? <laughs> there are times again it, they happen, but not normally, right? Normally, if things are going well, you're getting dots. Yep. Um, you want to look at some moose? Okay. I feel well, like yeah. I feel like we're just gonna see. I mean, okay, I don't know what we're gonna see. I feel like. There are a couple of really easy moves to predict, but, like, what does Austria do? Does Austria defend? Does Austria YOLO it after Germany? Um, do Italy and France fight over Iberia, or do they make truce to go after Germany? I don't know. Like, there's... I'm, I'm curious, and I think this comes down too much to diplomacy and the negotiations they've already had for me to make effective predictions, because this is a real changing point, I believe. 
Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, de things depend a lot on how well people can get along and fight against Germany, but I think, given what's happened so far, we're going to see a general concession to Germany in the north, at least, um, which could well be enough. Uh, the south, we're probably going to see, well, it, Italy and Turkey try and align, right? But that fleet Naples... Could mean even they're not getting along well. Yeah, we'll see. Yep. All right, let's go to spring. All right. Okay. Okay. That's some anti-German moves. There's there's a war going on. So, England does move against Germany and Burgundy, but they also take Germany's support out of the North Sea into Norway. And don't choose to bounce, right? They don't then move Norwegian Sea into North Sea to bounce Denmark out of North. Yeah. So it looks like they're saying like okay, half conceding. Yeah, they they're saying okay, uh, Italy, I'll help you out on this front, but I'm gonna kill Russia. Uh, like my north and Russia. Planet Russia is... deserves to die because Russia's pissed me off too much. Yeah, I I, I think that's reasonable. Yep. Um. Then, uh, we do see that suicidal charge from the Austrian against the German. That's maybe not so suicidal, right? Well, yeah, no. Turkey, it... Turkey's taking Romania with only Serbia, so Budapest is probably okay. And there's actually a good shot that the uh, Turkey just moves Romania into Sevastopol as long as those um, Austrian units are working to Turkey's advantage. Yeah, I expect they're going after Warsaw. Yep. Or potentially helping Turkey into Sevastopol, but Warsaw seems, Warsaw seems likely. And that army in Bohemia can mess around with Munich, but I think Munich's okay, because Silesia, Kiel, and Ruhr all exist. Yep, that looks like a pretty solid line. But we are seeing a, a really concerted effort in the south here to prevent the German win. Yeah, the German Although, just straight solo. Venice moving to Piedmont instead of to Tyrolia in this case. I guess it's to make sure Italy and it's for Italy to make sure they're on the table as a potential winner, um, Maybe. securing those SCs. It's also because Tyrolia wasn't guaranteed to make it to Bohemia, and this way Rome gets into better position. That's this true. is like the the safer option that gets you into good position as opposed to the risky one for a much higher gain. Yep. Um, I would have liked to move to Tyrolia, but. I also see that it would have worked. <laughs> yeah, hindsight, it's always easier. Um, so yeah, maybe this southern effort will be quite strong, especially considering there's so few German units in the east here. Um, and, like, Germany doesn't hold any of France. Uh, that's pretty big as well. Uh, we do see a fleet in Gascony again. Um... <laughs> crazy yeah that's what the third time this game yeah yeah and that's position to take Brest. i assume agreed upon given gulf of leon goes to spain and they're they're working together on burgundy right so is there a ton more to talk about here seems like the south works against germany tries to hold him to, okay uh, away from the solo, but ultimately I think they're just gonna... They're gonna stop him from soloing, but he's gonna be the top and he's gonna win, so... Yeah, that's the problem with this, right? Only one person can take the board top, so if it's gonna be someone in the south, they have to agree on who it is. <laughs> Which uh, is a very hard thing to do, because you want to, it to be you. You're not gonna be the person who gives the board top to someone else. Um, Whereas if Germany tops the board, then hey, they earned it, right, without, and it wasn't your fault. Um, yep. So, yeah, I think I agree. Sorry, I went to the next moves. Um, okay, let's move on to the full phase. Well, not the full phase, the retreats. That was a retreat into Finland. Um, obvious only choice. And then on the next moves, here we are. Yeah, everything just fell apart. Yep. Okay. Uh, Austria turns around completely, I assume. That was maybe as a result of Turkey moving into Romania, but Turkey did actually try and get into Sevastopol and do what we were talking about. 
I guess that just wasn't coordinated and communicated ahead of time. But like, that's, I feel like, I don't know, like, what else did you want Turkey to do? Mm. I... Right, what? I mean, I, I assume that uh, maybe Germany took Austria aside and said, what are you playing for kind of thing? If you're doing this, you're, like, sacrificing all your SCs because Turkey is going to take them um, at some point, and you're doing it to screw me, and I haven't done anything against you for the whole game. Um, so, yes, it looks like you're fighting against the board top and all that, but it's not actually helping you to do so. <laughs> it's you, You're just giving it to Turkey instead. Uh, because that line of reasoning could well work. Um, and Sure. Like, something clearly did work. <laughs> yeah. Like this, Germany uh, showed fantastic diplomacy throughout the game. There were every time he needed a somebody's unit to help him, that unit did. Yep. Um, and we see England up here uh, refusing to take the support into Sweden and paying for it um, by getting dislodged from Norway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but like, I feel like the England didn't care, right? Yeah, well, the England English player was trying to eliminate uh, Russia. I suppose that probably will happen now because uh, Germany can support himself up into Saint Petersburg um, safely. Now, no, he can't support himself safely because Armenia is there to attack Sebastopol. Yep. So maybe England doesn't get his wish. Maybe Russia manages to stay alive here. <laughs> And uh, the convoy of that unit over into the English mainland is just the, the like the last thing that will make England c completely collapse on that front. Yep, yep, the final nail in the coffin. That's what I was looking for. I forgot the term. It is very late here. <laughs> yep. But yeah, well, you want to just blitz through the end, just like look uh, at yeah, the we last can moves. do. I did want to say England did also like turn around and just force Italy back out of Spain again. Um, yeah, but like Spain can retreat into Portugal, right? Yep. Try to uh, block Marseille. Basically, England is not fighting the German board top anymore, uh, which yeah. is fair again, because at this point the um, l you're not deciding on whether you get the board top, you're deciding on who else gets the board top. and You can make any decision if you can reason it for, the, for yourself and that, but... Uh, England has clearly decided that Germany should get the board top here. Um, so, yeah, retreat into Portugal happens here, retreat into Norwegian up at the top, uh, and a retreat into Bulgaria from the Turk, who doesn't gain anything because the Austrian turned on them. Um, and then if we go into the build phase here, uh, Italy did go plus one and puts down a fleet. Which is an interesting choice. <laughs> yeah. I, I suppose at this point... The armies are probably... trapped. Yeah. Fleets can get around the Met, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think at this point they might be starting to accept that there's not a lot they can do. Um, specifically the Austrian turning around would have been pretty demoralizing on that front. Yeah, I mean, if the Austria stays on board, then, like, Warsaw, Moscow, and Sev are all, are all gonna fall pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but without that, then Germany is just gonna... Germany's gonna hold this line forever. And, uh... And that's gonna do it. Yep. Alright. Um, not a lot else to talk about here. England disbanding in the north instead of taking anything off in the south, I think very clearly says, you know, <laughs> I'm giving this to Germany, um, and, or, yeah, at least not contesting Germany, um. Yeah, I mean, holding the Mediterranean line, but not fighting for your home centers is just, it's saying, oh, yeah, let's, let, let's have Germany win. Yeah, okay, and then I guess we move on to the spring phase? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, and here we see uh, Austria supporting German units into Trollia here, Germany moving into Galicia behind the Austrian. Um, just a whole lot of... <laughs> a whole lot of pro-German things going on. Uh, Italy is still... No, Italy isn't even really trying to contest the German here. 
moving into Paris with Brest. Um, I suppose they're doing what they can by blowing up the English fleet in Spain, except it can retreat to Gascony again. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, there's there's not really much the southern side of the board can do at this point. They can't get enough SCs to, to counter what's going on up here. Um, yeah, I mean, there looks like there are two countries trying to throw to a third, who is already the biggest, so... Yeah. Yep. Okay. And uh, it, it looks like Austria did, like, offer a support for Bulgaria to Serbia. So maybe he was saying, if you do this, maybe I'll get back on your side. But uh, Turkey clearly having none of it and moving in with Greece instead, which... I mean, after Austria turned around, right, that, that, that lost the opportunity. There's now too many German armies, even if Austria flips. Yep. Germany's um... got it. Maybe not. Bohemia's mm. important, but... Yeah, and uh, they can immediately force Sevastopol if the Austrian comes back on side, but I think... They can, but from Sevastopol, it retreats into Ukraine. And from Ukraine, the Moscow, Ukraine, Warsaw, Silesia, Berlin, Munich line um, is, is a really strong line. It's not technically a stalemate yet. You need something else, I believe, in Prussia or Livonia to make it true. Um, but it's already basically a stalemate. And so you need to get more pressure on the West, which is not going to happen. Yep. So it was it was basically over. Yep. Uh, and then I think if we move ahead to the fall phase here, well, there's a retreat first into Gascony. We got to get that fleet into Gascony again. One more time. But uh, fall nineteen ten is where this game draws. So all the players agree, okay, the board top isn't changing, this is the result, and John Anderson in Germany, despite picking their country f sixth, um, <laughs> comes out on top with the, uh, with the board top. How many centers is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 center board top. Really solid. Yeah, Turkey second, uh, like England and Italy tied for third. Is uh, England only has four, right? Um, and Italy still has a fair amount more than that. Um, um I'm an idiot. I can't count. I forgot <laughs> that Brest and I just assumed Brest and Paris were German. It's been a long commentary. <laughs> Yeah, it's just Preston and Paris are, like, so not Italian, but they are technically Italian, so... <laughs> yep. I, I forgot about them. Just that one Italian army has done so much work up there. Um, been walking around through Marseille and then into Gascony and then Brest and then Paris and just holding down the entire front by itself. Um, yeah, it really, really messed up the English there. Yep. Uh... But yeah, really solid result for the German, um, and we did nearly see the Turkish comeback that, that you do see at the end of the game if, Tur if Turkey manages to hold on, despite Turkey being in that really awkward position quite a lot of times earlier in the game. Um, so good pushback from them. Russia was never eliminated. Yeah, Russia, Russia survived this. still on the board. Uh, despite the... Um, the, the English attempt to get rid of them. Uh, yeah, but massive congratulations to John Anderson here. I think uh, the fact that he... There was a lot of brilliant played, play this game. Yeah, he he played the uh, the diplomatic side perfectly, I think, or or at least perfectly for a good amount of it. Just amazingly, yeah. There were, there were so many critical times where he managed to get units on side, and... I mean, tactically as well and strategically, I feel like it was it, it was fantastic. Um, remember earlier we were, were I was worried about Germany's inability to become a corner power, um, but it it wasn't much of an issue, and when it would have become an issue in the late game, he was able to essentially kill Russia. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was a masterful Germany game. Even when like Russia wasn't ever, like, completely out of the north, but uh, he didn't need to be a corner power because he kind of absorbed Russia into his empire, in a sense, without even taking the Russian dots. And then when Russia turned on him, he made sure that, that Russia wasn't harming him still. 
uh, to an extent that would properly like destroy him. This is a Germany that never became a corner power in any respect, and yet is on 12 centers. That's a really impressive finish. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and like we did see some really fun things in this game. Especially in the East, I did the uh, Italian growth and then sudden collapse, the Austrian growth, the uh, slower growth and then sudden collapse, um, the Turkish being on the back foot for a bunch of it and then coming back at the very end but not quite managing to pull it out. It's been a fantastic game to watch. I'm silly. Yeah, so we will call it here. Um, it's been a great game. I will. <laughs> Should I now plug the uh, Diplomacy Broadcast Network's coverage? We already plugged it at the start. We you don't have did. to plug it again. That's true. Okay. Uh, don't you watch the Diplomacy. You should all check out the Diplomacy <laughs> coverage. It's, it's a thing. They did live coverage. It was great. And they have lots of really smart people who are really good at Diplomacy talking about everything you need to know. So They do. You they probably had, listen to them. They had two world champions on the commentary, and we've got us two. It's very sad. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're comparable. I think um, what we lack in knowledge about diplomacy, we more than make up for in bad jokes. Yep, and calling everything France. And calling everything France. I think we were better about it this time. Yep, that's that's true. It was only a couple but of times. But it's hard to be worse. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, this has been the Weasel Moot 2020 top board, and really good one. Uh, look forward to seeing you all next time. Uh, Alright, we should probably cut out that last bit at the end <laughs> um, <laughs> about about the world champions and stuff.